And we welcome you here to Bowling Green, Kentucky, South Florida, and the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky, Alex Sabario and former Notre Dame quarterback Malik Zaire as we get a shot down the sideline, and it's incomplete here as the South Florida Bulls moving things on offense here in the early going. And Malik, we were already seeing the speed of this new-look South Florida team get going here against Western Kentucky. Oh, yeah, they're just moving seamlessly with a quarterback that's coming in, trying to get comfortable. And the one thing you're seeing early is Alex Galesh is not always putting everything on him they're trying to run the ball early and it's got to have the western kentucky has to communicate to be able to play efficient you want to play efficient against a team that's moving fast and they're doing a pretty good job but they can do better right here byron brown started two games at the end of last season for south florida in at quarterback he wins the quarterback job finds some route down the sidelines tries to walk the tightrope before the momentum got him out of bounds but he picks up a first down inside the 15 at the 14 yard line and they are moving again that's the danger you got the quarterback draw he becomes an extra hat in the box and you got to be able to make a tackle on the quarterback don't be soft go get him quickly on first down brown with another handoff this time western kentucky has it sniffed out once again It's Michael Dukes, the transfer from Clemson, there on the carry. As it, Dylan Gidry comes up with the tackle. Slow and methodical hit offenses right here in the red zone. No gain on first down. This time fires over the middle, and that pass deflected there. Nice play by Virgil Marshall, the safety. He's from Florida, the sophomore. And that's what you got to do. You got to pressure through the middle to get the quarterback a little uncomfortable because he's not getting a lot of depth in the pocket. And you got to play man on the backside and play some great one-on-one, -on -one, which West Kentucky has in the secondary. Hilltoppers defensive coordinator Tyson Summers said third down is going to be very important. It's Brown out of the pocket, trying to find some room, just dumps it off at the last second pass complete at the five-yard line. So they pick up some yardage very close to the first down marker there. That's... Choffrey Brown on the reception, and it's going to be fourth down and about one. Talik Hill making the play to get it close to first down yardage there and able to stop South Florida in that situation, and we get a timeout on the field. If you take a look at Alex Golish, his first season as South Florida head coach, last two seasons, the OC over at Tennessee. For those of you watching our free streaming coverage, it will conclude after the commercial break, but we will continue on CBS Sports Network. You can find us by going to cbssportsnetwork.com slash channel find. Football on CBS Sports Network presented by The Home Depot. We are in Bowling Green, Kentucky, South Florida, and Western Kentucky as week one continues here on CBS Sports Network. Alex Sobario alongside former Notre Dame quarterback Malik Zaire. We got a fourth down situation here for South Florida in their first offensive drive. As you take a look at offensive coordinator Joel Gordon, decision time, and it looks like South Florida going to go for it here on fourth down on their first drive under the new regime of Alex Golish. As we see Byron Brown line up ready to take the snap. Big fourth down here for the Bulls on their first drive. And it's Brown finding some room with the fake, takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, first drive successful for the Bulls. Great play call by Alex Golish, knowing they're going to line up man on man. You get a QB option with your guy that can run with Byron Brown, put the defender in a situation that you can't lose, and they did a good job of getting that one yard and scooting on to the end zone. That's what you want to see, putting guys in conflict positions. The, the defender couldn't make the right choice. Byron Brown went up, scored a touchdown. That's a great start for a first-year offense and under Byron Brown. John Cannon in to kick the point after for the Bulls. Byron Brown had a little bit of that Malik Zaire shoulder shimmy, by the way. That's right. Hey, listen, when you get a first touchdown of the season, you got to give a little sauce to it. Got to get a little sauce. So South Florida in a new regime under Alex Golesh. They score on their opening drive. Bulls up 7-0. So far, so good for the South Florida Bulls under new head coach Alex Golish. You can see what he's done as an offensive coordinator the last several years, including leading the country in points per game and total offense at Tennessee. We know how high-powered that offense has been, Malik, over the last couple of years. 
and already an immediate impact here with the Bulls. Yeah, just the comfortability. If you can put numbers up like that, like Alex Golish has been able to do, you can pick anywhere in the country to go, and he chose USF, and he's making it count right here. So 7 nothing Bulls on the early touchdown from their quarterback, Byron Brown, and it's going to be a short kickoff here as we will get a return here on that left side, trying to find some room to Quez Evans. The energy the is return. standing out. The energy is standing out early with this USF team. So here we go with this high-powered offense. You know, if you, if you looked at this game on paper going in, the league, we're going to talk about Austin Reed. And, of course, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. He's on a ton of the watch lists, including the Manning, the Werfel, the Maxwell watch list, among others, as he leads this offense, leading the country in passing from last year. He's got Malachi Corley back. Nearly 65% completion percentage last year as he leads this high-octane offense of the field. Quickly, left side, and the pass is complete. Corley getting things going early here as we take a look at the offense for Western Kentucky. Davion Poindexter leading the way in the backfield there as they quickly move to the line here on second down and a long five. Handoff on second down goes to Poindexter. Jalen Stokes in on the tackle. Stokes, sophomore from Auburndale, Florida. We look at that defense, Summerall there, and then in the linebacking core with two, Gordon and Schuler into the DBs, and Brown, Evans, Barry Hill, Stokes, and Clark. Third down here for the Hilltoppers as they try to get their offense going here on third down and four. One thing you're noticing, that check with me to the sideline. Make sure you get in the right play early. Trust Austin Reed will make the right decision, get his team in the right space, and see if they can convert him this first first down. Four receivers here early. Penalty markers come out, and we get a false start. False start. Offense, number 73, five-yard penalty, remains third down. Our referee is Garrett Dickerson. Umpire Jeremy Epps, Garrett Dickerson, Jeff Micas is the head linesman, Jonathan May, Danny Fowler, Clarence Cotton, Gordon Everett Jr., Chris Borrell to make up the rest of the officials. As we see Tyson Helton now in his fifth season as the head coach of Western Kentucky. So what was a third down and five now becomes, or pardon me, third and four, now becomes a third down and nine. Still trips to the right here for the Hilltoppers. Back to pass, Reed looking, firing. That pass deflected at the line of scrimmage. Big time defensive play as Tramel Logan swats it out of the air. Great defensive play, getting your hands up, batting the ball down. I mean, that comes from effort and energy from this defense, which Alex Gillespie said the whole team had the energy from the beginning of camp to the end of camp, and they're showing out on their first day out under Alex Gillespie. I mean, this is the energy you want to see, and Tim Orlando is probably super excited to see his defense matching the offense's intensity. 6'4", 247 out of Booker T. Washington High School in Miami, so a defensive stop for the South Florida Bulls. And you gotta bet Todd Orlando, who's trying to reinvent this defense that was the worst in college football last year, coming up with a defensive stop already in the first game, first drive of the season, as we get a fair catch at about the 34-yard line here. Now, tomorrow night at 7 Eastern, it's a Canadian Football League clash as the Winnipeg Blue Bombers go for their sixth straight victory against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Catch the kickoff here on CBS Sports Network. Well, this is about, go, going as, about as good as it can on the road for South Florida after the first two drives of the game for each club. Scary territory for Western Kentucky. You're already back on defense on the field, and you just gave up seven on a good drive. Usually the USF offense or the Tennessee offense that Alex Gillespie ran was a 10-12 to 12 play drive a team. They're looking to do the same here at USF, and Western Kentucky has to find a way to slow them down by getting that middle pressure to get the quarterback off the spot. But when you get back there, you got to make the tackle. You can't let Byron Brown slip out and make plays down the field. Naquan Wright with 37 yards on that first drive in the backfield here for the Bulls as Byron Brown out for his second drive of the game. Here at quarterback, handoff right up the middle and on the run is Michael Dukes. Finds some room, bounces out to the sideline, gets across midfield and into Western Kentucky territory at the 40 yard line. Wow, they're finding ways to run the football. Usually you would think they would be throwing it out or trying to hit something down the field. They must see something with the middle of defense having a light box that they can just run all day and inside. So from the 40, 
Another handoff here, this time to Dukes. Takes it right side as we take a look at the offensive lineup here for South Florida. You can see Naquan Wright was the starter at running back, although Michael Dukes running the ball now. You see the offensive line had an injury earlier here as Brown back to pass. Looking, penalty marker is out, brought down at the 40-yard line. We have seen some penetration from this Western Kentucky defensive line a couple of times. It's a matter of getting consistency in this running game for South Florida. Let's see what the penalty is. It appears like it's going to be against the Bulls. It's Davion Williams on the tackle. Offense, number 51, 10-yard penalty. Replay, second down. That holding call will bring him back here to about midfield. Something Tyson Summers wants to be able to do is be able to have a good rotation. What you notice early on the defensive side, you got a lot of guys with their hands on their hips. This is the second drive of the game, which means they're moving fast. You know, he was concerned it's the middle of the day. You've got the sun out. It's the first game of the season. You know, you don't really know what you have in terms of conditioning in a game situation just yet, especially facing a team with this type of speed. They're going to test you. <laughs> and he said, we got to take every opportunity we can to sub, and that South Florida, or at least coach, uh, teams coached by Alex Golish, don't make it easy for you to sub defensively. Pass over the middle, and it's intercepted. Desmond Whoa. Baker comes up with it. The transfer from Rice hauls it in. And just what the Western Kentucky defense needed after allowing a first drive touchdown, they get the turnover, and Western Kentucky gets it back. Oh, man, what a great job by reading the quarterback and following the play. The quarterback had no chance to see it, and, and that's how you got to make plays against this USF offense, by turning the ball over. Great drop by the middle linebacker, getting underneath that throw, and, man, that's a playmaker for you right there, and that's impressive to be able to change the tide, and now you can get Western Kentucky starting on the right foot on offense. And I'll be honest with you, that he kind of came out of nowhere even for me. I, I was looking at him kind of come across the screen on that pass over the middle, which is usually good opportunity to get a completion, but he got the step and was able to make the play. Back to pass here is Reed as they look to capitalize. Big time throw to Malachi Corley. Breaks free inside the red zone, inside the 15, and the Hilltoppers are moving. One of Austin Reed's greatest strengths is coming out of their momentum and gutting the defense with vertical passes to his favorite target, Malachi Corley. Now they're moving quickly. Reed quickly. Corley right side on the bubble, and they had that one snipped out right away. Daquan Evans comes in and makes the tackle there. A loss of one for the Hilltoppers. Early on, they're trying to get the ball to Malachi Corley in every way possible. Throw it to a bubble, hit him in the seam, possibly hand it off. But you got to have great compliment by the other receivers doing their job to block and make plays for him as well. Corley on the Bolitnikov and the Maxwell watch lists. 101 catches, nearly 1,300 yards receiving last year. This is the top offensive tandem quarterback and receiver returning in the country from last season. As Reed fires left side. Well, pushing and shoving along the way. But the pass is incomplete. Amaris Brown in on the coverage there for South Florida. Great defense by Maris Brown. That's the one-on-one -on -one that you're going to have all day. He did a great job of hand fighting with defender, made sure he looked back and didn't collide with the receiver or impede his, his route at all. And so great defense on the one-on-one, -on -one, but that's, that's the matchup that's going to be apparent all day are these one-on-ones on the outside. Craig Burton, Dalvin Smith over on that left side. You know, a lot of new targets here for Austin Reed this season. And he had to find ways to get them going. Fires left side, got a man. It's Corley gets close to the end zone. Gets to about the one-yard line. We'll see where they mark it. Daquan Evans stops the touchdown there as the Hilltoppers are moving. You love to see a lot of pre-snap motions to give Austin Reed the man's own look. As soon as he saw the safety travel, he knew I'm going to my number one target one-on-one. -on -one. And it's, they're successful doing it. And they got right where they need to be to punch it in for the end zone. First and goal from the two officially here. They'll put Corley in motion. Hand off, up the middle it goes, into the end zone for the touchdown. It is Marquise Stepp, the fifth year senior out of Indianapolis, transfer out of both Nebraska and USC. 
gets into the end zone for the first touchdown of the year for the Hilltoppers. Great job, Western Kentucky's offense of responding to a great turnover by their defense. This is what you call complimentary football on both sides of the ball. Played in Nebraska the last two seasons. 45 carries for just 177 yards last year at Nebraska. He's going to get a lot of more offensive opportunities to carry the football here at Western Kentucky as we get the snap, the hold, the kick is up. And it's good. Already with points on the board here early. 7.03 to play here in the opening quarter. Western Kentucky responds to South Florida's opening drive. Touchdown thanks to the big time turnover on the interception. Western Kentucky evens things up. It's seven apiece here in Bowling Green. Well, the Hilltoppers respond to South Florida's opening drive touchdown. We're all knotted up at seven apiece here in Bowling Green with 7.03 remaining here in the opening quarter with seven nothing Bulls and then Western Kentucky was finally able to make a big time defensive play there as you see the interception then the response Malachi Corley goes off on the drive five plays 53 yards later and just under two minutes Western Kentucky puts it in the end zone on a touchdown from Marquis Step as we get ready kickoff on the return here Michael Dukes, the transfer from Clemson, gets it to about the 17-yard line as South Florida now comes up. So a very successful opening drive, Malik, and then a, a drive that you don't want to see if you're if you're Alex Golish, a turnover from your young quarterback. Yeah, that happens. This is the working through the youth of a Byron Brown, and, and what you really want to see now if I'm Alex Golish is how does my young guy respond? It's early on in the game. It's not going to impact the game too much. But you can tell if you have turnovers against this Western Kentucky team, you will pay on the offensive side. Now here come the Bulls here on offense. This is Wright, who got the majority of the carries on the first drive. Anthony Johnson Jr. comes up with the tackle. The transfer from West Florida actually played with Austin Reed at West Florida at one point as a quarterback keeper here from Brown, and that one not going anywhere. So we take a look at the Western Kentucky defense here. A lot of guys coming back, and Tyson Summers very excited about some key players, including Anthony Johnson, just made the tackle, and his defensive line like Marcus Patterson and Reed Jamerson. But he says he's got some guys, some especially young guys that he likes, that he, he, think, he sees bright futures in down the road. Yeah, one of those is Upton Stout, uh, a great defensive player at, at the corner position, said he can be the number one in the SEC corner for any team out there, so that's pretty impressive coming from a school like this. Now Brown sniffs it out, firing left side, had a target there that was open, but it's incomplete, too far out of bounds, and that's going to bring up fourth down. So Western Kentucky, after giving up the first defense, as you look here at the pressure from Western Kentucky, Getting that pressure on Byron Brown, a young quarterback, to flush him out the pocket and make him uncomfortable. These are throws that you want. If I'm Tyson Summers, the defense coordinator, I want him to make stress throws outside the pocket to get a young guy off his platform, and they were able to do that, and that's how you stop a team that's going 100 miles an hour. Byron Brown, now three of seven for 16 yards in the game passing as the Bulls will put it away, and the penalty marker coming out here, the false start. False start, offense, number 25, five-yard penalty, remains fourth down. Just back the kicker up a little bit, gave him some room to flex his, his kicking muscle. So standing near his own 40-yard line, KD Hutchinson, ready to receive the punt. He's the only one back there for Western Kentucky. That one's in the air, is gonna take a bounce at the 45, take a Bulls bounce, roll past the 45, go out of bounds over near the 30 yard line, and that's where the Hilltoppers offense will once again take over. So Western Kentucky's defense making a couple of big defensive plays. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by the Home Depot. 
How doers get more done by Ram Trucks, built to serve, and by Geico. For all your insurance needs, it's easy to Geico. Back on the hilltop is Austin Reed, a veteran here for Western Kentucky, returning back for hoping for another big time season at quarterback. Already has led his team to a game tying touchdown. Third drive of the game here for the Hilltoppers as we get a run on first down just across the 30 to the 31 yard line. The USF D line is not giving up too many gaps for the run game to, to, to add on to what Austin Reed is already pushing on, on the offensive side, being able to throw the ball down the field. But they got to find a way, either schematically or, or different ways, to run the football and be effective because right now they're not getting it up the middle like they want to. Point extra with the run on first down. Just picked up one. So second and nine here as Reed takes a snap, fires over the middle. Dangerous throw and coming in. Jalen Stokes with a little shoulder nudge as he coming to make a play on Malachi Corley there just to kind of let him know he was there. Right? Yeah, after every play, you're just seeing energy. He's, he's reading the quarterback's eyes and he's playing through the defend, through the offender. He's not letting the receiver catch and make the tackle after. He's playing the ball through the def, uh, offender and that's what you need to do if you want to be able to break up the ball. That's great, great technique by the defense. So here's third down and nine. Reed couple extra steps on the drop. That's another pass deflected. Got his hands on it there. That was Logan Berryhill able to get his fingertips on it. What a vertical he's got. That's the, that's the second batted ball today, and it's early on. These guys are flying around. They're not playing with uh, any hesitation right now defensively, and they're all excited. After every play, you see somebody dancing. You see somebody making some gestures. I mean, this is an exciting USF defense to play for and an exciting team to play under. Austin Reed's going to have a long day. He's got to be a little more efficient, but this is going to match. It's going to be interesting to see how it develops over time to see if they can keep that energy up on the USF defense. Sean Atkins back to receive this punt from Tom Ellard, who's on the Conference USA preseason watch list at punter. He was in the all-freshman team. Takes a bounce here and it rolls inside the 20 and gets down here by Western Kentucky. So South Florida's offense will come onto the field inside their own 20-yard line. I'm expecting Byron Brown to come out throwing a little bit more. They did a little bit more running with him last drive, but he can throw the football pretty well. So let's see if he can extend the field a little bit, get the ball outside of the box, throw it around, and maybe get that momentum started like they had the first drive where they can seamlessly run and pass down the field. You know, it's no secret that the South Florida team has really no pomp and circumstance around it going into the season. A team that hasn't put together a lot of wins in recent seasons. One of the reasons they went to go find a coach like Alex Golesh, who's run one of the top offenses in the country over the last several years. And what was interesting is a lot of these key players, like his quarterback here, Byron Brown, actually stuck around. And this is a team that has a lot of transfers. But he said he knew that there was talent here. As Brown back, he gets swallowed up. That defensive line starting to find ways to get through this defense, or pardon me, this offensive line of South Florida. The key is getting him off his spot. The quarterback is taking one step after the snap, and when you get hands up and you pressure the middle of the pocket, it's hard to get him on platform and make comfortable throws. Here on second down, it's got a man down the right side. Joffrey Brown takes it all the way. Touchdown. And that's the danger. You're doing so much internal pressure where you leave your guys singled up on the outside. And that's the matchup that Alex Galesh and this USF offense wants, those one-on-ones. And this is just a great ball. Good job by the quarterback holding the safety in the middle of the field and just letting it rip. Letting it rip down the field. Kafri Brown, I mean, man, that's what you want. And look at that excitement by Alex Golan. He's like, that's what I'm talking about. Throw it down the field. Challenge him. 84 yards on the touchdown there. Choffrey Brown on the connection from Byron Brown. What can Brown do for you for South Florida? 13, make it now 14 to 7 after the point after. Explosive plays here from South Florida. 14 to 7, they lead it. Back on the hilltop in 30.
428 to go here in the first quarter. South Florida with an 84-yard touchdown reception by Choffrey Brown. So Western Kentucky will look to respond here on the return. Get it all the way to about the 30-yard line. USF putting some pressure on this Western Kentucky offense to keep up. We didn't usually thought going into this game it would be vice versa. Austin Reed would be leading the pack and USF catching up. But right now, the efficiency from the USF offense is putting Western Kentucky in a position where they got to respond almost every drive. So if anybody can do it, Austin Reed, the nation's leading passer, and Malachi Corley, the nation's leading playmaker, can make it happen. And this is going. This is the shootout that we've been talking about since the beginning. So Reed responded after they were down seven nothing pass over the middle incomplete he was looking for step there just in and out of his hands austin reed wanted to come into this season with the mastery of the offense and that's just a part of it finding the check down taking what the defense gives you now that the other guys have to do their part they got to catch the ball they got to be in lockstep with their quarterback to make his day a little easier I was really impressed in our conversation with Reed yesterday. He just seems so ready to learn as much as possible through the season. You know, he could have had opportunities to go elsewhere. You know, he's a, he's a guy that when you've got guys that come into this program, make a name for themselves, those phone calls start to come after you have a year like he had from somewhere else. But he elected to stay, continue on the legacy. He was very proud of the quarterbacking legacy they have at Western Kentucky. Yeah, he told us right off when he was looking at schools, it was two schools that produced the most NFL quarterbacks, and that was Oklahoma and Western Kentucky. So Reed looking to make a play here on third down, third down and seven. Hilltoppers just one of three on third down today. Pass over the middle and another drop pass. Dalvin Smith, the intended target this time. And again, the question marks going into the season were not for Reed and Corley. It was really for all the other playmakers. Again, very early, but this is where you're going to see who's going to make the plays and who's going to get the opportunities as the season moves on for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, it's definitely frustrating when you, you got everything right and you just got to finish the play. That's what happens when you have young receivers. But Austin Reed has to show this leadership and in, in, in not reacting too strongly to drop passes, but encouraging his guys to make plays, especially guys outside of Malachi Corley. Son Atkins back to receive the punt here. He'll backpedal over near the 20 yard line. Take a hit as he makes the catch. And that might get the, the fans back into this one. As Messer, Easton Messer from down the road in Louisville making the play here on special teams. Yeah, this is how you change the field and change momentum with a big play. Good job by being able to find the nearest hip, not slow down, and make the play. This is a great tackle. This is something that can get the defense juiced up and potentially get another pick out of it. So South Florida's offense back on after a big-time strike between Brown and Brown. What can Brown do for you? That was a good one. <laughs> Brown back pressure comes getting swallowed up down he goes in the backfield Terry on Thompson with the sack had a couple last year for this Bowling Green defense he's from right down the road at Bowling Green High School a local product and quickly even after a sack Byron Brown quickly back to get things going offensively they'll slow things down to look at the sidelines with three minutes left to go here in the first quarter. You even got to speed up your sack celebrations playing against this USF <laughs> offense. You don't get a chance to do your thing. Good grief. So Brown with the handoff on first down. And again, right breaking free. Finds some room. Gets to the left side. Finally brought down after picking up a first. Rome Weber with the stop as they bring him to about the 35-yard line. It's a great play response, being able to find the, the weakness in the defense in the run game and being able to gash them as much as you can. So, little tight end insert right there. Brackenridge on the tackle there for Western after about a four-yard pickup. What's underrated is the effectiveness that Naquan Wright has been able to have 
in the run game for USF to kind of get the drive continuing so you can have Byron Brown make plays like this. Pass over the middle, dangerous throws. It sailed over the head of his intended target, Kelly Joyner, and was very, very close to Talik Allen. Kelly Joyner, a guy that went from running back to receiver to running back, back to receiver, filled in a lot for the spring because the receiver group was low. Somebody that we'll see a lot more this year, but Kelly Joyner is going to be a good target for Byron Brown, especially when you're talking about down the field strikes. So he may have missed this first one, but we expect a lot more coming soon. Tyson Holton with some massive subs after the incompletion just to try to get some fresh legs and keep fresh legs on the field defensively. Got to cover zero West Kentucky defense. Third down and six. They're one of three on third down. Kind of a sidearm throw complete to Michael Dukes. Getting close to the sticks and just setting a wall there is Desmond Baker. Not allowing him to get the first down. And it's going to be fourth and about two and a half here for South Florida. Decision time near the middle of the field. If I'm Tyson Summers, I'm not changing the defensive structure. I'm coming after him again. Same thing. But be careful for the outside flanking like the right here. Load up the box here. Dukes again gets the carry and able to find some room, finds the hole, gets the first down. If they're stacking the inside, go outside. What an easy call to make it. You can do that when you're moving fast, and they're converting great on fourth down. So here on first down, they'll get it to about midfield. Now remember, there's a new rule in college football now. There's no clock stopping on the first down anymore. We've got the running clock through a majority of the game. Again, the offenses used to be able to take advantage of that opportunity to let the clock stay down, and these those games would end up being a lot longer. So we'll see how it affects play here in college football as we get a run from Brown. One thing we see is affecting the refs. They can barely spot the football and get out the way before the play is being ran next. <laughs> and we've got a player down for Western Kentucky over near the 40-yard line as we've got a third and two coming up with about 38 seconds left in the first quarter here. Partner, I got I to tell you, I've, I've been very impressed with South Florida here in this first quarter of action. They don't look like a, a first-year team or under Alex Galesh being able to look efficient, having answers in tough spots is something that looks like they have a lot of experience doing. Anytime they're in short yardage, they're just evaluating the box, a check with me. Okay, they're stacking inside, let's go outside. They're going outside, let's go inside. Making the game really simple for a young quarterback that needs this in order to get more experience. He had an early turnover, responded with a really good throw down the field. If I'm the quarterback, I'm feeling relaxed. I feel like I'm in a good spot to continue to operate and it's not making it a complicated situation. Great job by Alex Galesh. You know, this is a game that, you know, I think we all had a mindset of how it would go based on these two teams on paper. You've got a more veteran team experience, bowl game victory for Western Kentucky, a team that was in the race for a Conference USA title last year. They're picked to finish at the top of Conference USA. And you got one of the worst teams in the country over the last four seasons coming in to on the road with a brand new head coach. But right now you've got a team in South, if I had showed you the numbers, who would have the most first downs at the end of the first quarter? You would have said easy Western Kentucky. It's nine to two in favor of the South Florida Bulls right now. 14 to seven with the lead here on third down with the clock ticking down. Under 30 seconds remaining in the quarter. Direct snap here to Dukes. Find some room up the middle. Gets into the secondary. Finally brought down, saving the touchdown. There was Rome Weber. What a great wrinkle, a little distraction piece. So many check with knees, but then you hit them with the direct snap. Man, they're thinking of everything on this offense. And we're going to have a false start penalty against South Florida. That's false the one start. thing. Offense, number zero, five-yard penalty remains first down. About teams that move this quickly is your offensive line's got to make sure that they don't move on the snap because you're moving so quickly. Yeah, you can't relax with this offense. I mean, even when they're checking with me and trying to get the right play, they're sneaking plays right up the gut. And then they were going to hit you with over the top. It looked like going on the outside until they got the ball started. Already 139 yards rushing for the South Florida Bulls through one quarter of play. We are in the books here at Bowling Green. Second quarter coming up on the other side. Western Kentucky's got some work to do, especially on defense. Alex Golish has his South Florida Bulls cooking early seven-point lead on the hill.
First quarter in the books here on the Hill on CBS Sports Network. South Florida coming in, making an impact early on offense under their new head coach, Alex Golish. Look at the difference here, Malik, in offense <laughs> from South Florida, Western Kentucky. If you're somebody who is watching this game on mute, you would have no idea. You would be thinking, hey, isn't that flip-flop? Didn't the graphics guy make a mistake? No. 30 plays, 242 yards of offense for South Florida, one of the worst teams in the country over the last few years, facing one of the top offenses the last several years under Tyson Helton. But here, South Florida making plays as we start the second quarter here with the Bulls looking for even more. Here is Desmond Baker comes up with the tackle. 240 plus yards in the first quarter is unheard of. <laughs> but under Alex Golish, there's a reason why he went from one away at Tennessee to number one in offense in just a year. Because this type of offense is never before seen, especially the speed and which the efficiency in which they operate. So on second and 15, another run up the middle here. Now, those runs up the middle have actually given this Western Kentucky defense problems as Aaron Key makes the tackle on Michael Dukes. They're finding ways. They're going to go inside, inside, inside. They hit you on the outside, especially when you got the quarterback being a third part to that running game. This this is a really good compliment, having a guy like Byron Brown being able to run, being able to throw, and the decision-making has been pretty solid to be able to put up the amount of yards. I mean, this is the perfect situation for Alex Golish in a first-game situation. Bulls 2 of 5 on third down so far today. On the option play, they'll pitch it over here to Dukes. The speed option is very effective when you've got everybody on the line of scrimmage. You can make it an easy conflict for the defense to put a player in a position where he can't tackle both guys. And honestly, he should have stayed in bounds and tried to find a way to slip inside. He probably would have scored, but great job by the West Kentucky defense getting this fast-paced offense off the field. Getting three is what is a win for a Western Kentucky defense that's given up so many yards already. John Cannon. Coming in here to attempt the field goal. Thirty-seven yards. The kick is up, and it is good. So South Florida continues to put points on the board here on the road in Bowling Green. They lead it by ten here on the Hilltop. Thirteen thirty-one remaining here in the half here in Bowling Green, Western Kentucky trailing by 10. I got to say, Malik, I'm a little, I'm not a little surprised. I'm a lot of surprised <laughs> at the way this thing is going so far. Oh, man, Alex Gilesh knows how to put points on the scoreboard. 17 early on, and it made it look easy. It wasn't complicated plays. They just ran a little bit inside. They threw it over the top. And it's something that West Kentucky's probably sitting back and like, we need to be doing the same thing. So here we've got the return as Elijah Young takes it to about the 20 yard line. That's where the drive will start. As we take a look at our Ram AP top 10, Malik was arguing why Notre Dame was not on this list before the game as if we had anything to do with who the top 10 is. This is your Ram AP top 10 by Ram Trucks. Georgia up at the top, Michigan already with a win, 30 to three today. And Ohio State already on top of Indiana, 7-0. It hurts not seeing Notre Dame in that top 10, but we, we got a long season. We'll, we'll sneak in there eventually. I knew that was coming. <laughs> first down here for the Hilltoppers as we get a run here on first down. Elijah Young on the carry there. We've seen a little bit of a copycat style from the West Kentucky offense trying to get up and line up early, get play a little faster to get this momentum for Austin Reed and this offense to get clicking. They got to click. If they caught the ball, there'd probably be a closer score than the scoreboard. Reed firing right side. Oh, man. Incomplete. I thought that was a, a grab there. They wanted a flag. Braxton Clark there in on the coverage. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense, number 11, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So, go ahead, Ronnie. A little too aggressive, but just look at the pressure. They're not making Austin Reed comfortable. They know they're facing the nation's top passer. They're like, we got to get hands in his face. And just a little aggressive this time, but with defensive coordinator uh, being able to 
uh, establish that scheme to make Austin Reed uncomfortable is working early on right now. DJ Harris was the one called for that personal foul. You mentioned Todd Orlando there. Really enjoyed his his really honesty about his team uh, and, and just kind of curious to see how they would play because he said the intensity and the energy was certainly high and you gotta you, you gotta give them a lot of credit they played very well already in one quarter as we get a false start here on Western false Kentucky start. offense number five five yard penalty the main second down for Todd Orlando to be able to convince this USF defense that they can do it. They can they can hold the nation's best passer and playmaker to seven points in the first quarter. And, and, and this is what the belief of a refreshed program looks like under Alex Gilesh and establishing that process. Todd Orlando is, is lockstep with Alex Gilesh and getting these units prepared in every occasion and be able to face each other on the opposite side every day at practice you're not going to see a speed like on offense like you do for the usf defense so this is normal that they're seeing back shoulder throw pass complete helmet comes off blue smith with a nice play and i bet austin reed's happy to find another target able to make a play as braxton clark was in on the coverage take a look yeah, they're making the tough grabs, but not making the easy ones. So hopefully they can start to do both and make the open catches instead of always making the tough grabs. Very important throw on there from Reed as he's looking left side and the pass is incomplete. Got to give credit to the USF secondary. They're, they're attached like glue on these Western Kentucky receivers, not making anything easy for a really good and accurate quarterback in Austin Reed. He's hanging on the football a little longer. He's got to make some back shoulder, really good throws because we all know the best offensive pass beats the best defense, but Austin has to pull a lot, a lot of these throws to make sure they can continue to move the chains, and that's a credit to the USF secondary. That was Muse Brown, the intended target there, the freshman transfer as we get a run of the right side by Jimmy Holiday, pass to the right side, I should say. And Reed starting to move the offense here a little bit, but we got a third down coming up here with 11 and a half to go in the quarter. Hilltoppers just one of four on third down in the game. Reed, extra step, drops, fires right side, and that pass incomplete. Braxton Clark there on the coverage. He was looking for Jimmy Holiday there. Man, everything is looking a little tough for Austin Reed, not being able to get too comfortable because the defensive line of USF is may not hit him every time, but they, they're letting them know that, hey, we're here, we're in your face, and even though you were the nation's top pass last year, you're, we're going to make it uncomfortable for you in that pocket, and they're going to make it a hot pocket instead. They're trying to get the right subs in. They're kind of, there was some kind of hesitation there from Coach Orlando's defense for USF, so they will take a timeout before what looks to be a fourth down attempt here in the middle of the field for Western Kentucky. So decision time here for Tyson Helton and his offense. Western Kentucky trying to get a first down. Well, this happened during the break here. That is Malachi Corley leaving the field here at Western Kentucky, one of the nation's top receivers. There's four reception, 55 yards in the game, leaving the field on a cart. That does not look good for Western Kentucky. Just so unfortunate for this, not only this Western Kentucky team, but for Corley, who had so much, not, not just hype, but just excitement about him coming into the season after nearly 1,300 yards last year. He is out. We don't know if or when he will return. Firing left side on fourth down. They were looking for Dalvin Smith, and Logan Berryhill was there to make a play. Kind of went head over heels after the hit. Yeah, if I'm Tyson, uh, <laughs> if I'm Tyson Summers, do I, what do I do to help this offense now that Malachi, Malachi Corley is not on the field any longer? I think this is, it's, it's not too early to hit the panic button, but it's going to be an interesting way that they find a way on offense for Western Kentucky to create plays. I mean, the best nation's best playmaker is out first game of the season. Austin Reed, 
that his go-to guy is essentially not there. So how do they find the offense to be able to complement this defense that's already on the field a lot? And so Tyson Summers got to find a way to continue to support his offense defensively. And off right side after the fourth down play that gave West, uh, South Florida the ball again. Michael Dukes runs it right side. Plenty of markers coming out here as Rayshon Hodge with the stop for Western. Holding. Offense. Number six. Ten yard penalty. Remains. First down. Now Malik, you know, as an offensive player, quarterback, I don't know if you've ever had your top receiver go out in the middle of the game in, in your time, but uh, how do you keep your offense as a leader focused on, hey, I know we don't have Malachi here, but what do we do now? This is, we gotta stay focused. I think one of the things that's really important is that the type of character Austin Reed has and the leadership that he has will be able to galvanize his offense to continue to play even if they don't have their best player in Malachi Corley. I mean, he's a very, very good leader that doesn't, is not afraid to be the meet the bad guy sometimes, but to also be the good guy and encourage his offense to step up. So if anybody can do it, Austin Reed can do it. Now another timeout taken time here from South Florida. South Florida. That's their second time out of the half. Full timeout. After the penalty, it'll be a first down and 20. So South Florida talking things over. And Western Kentucky just trying to find an answer for South Florida's offense. <laughs> 10 points for South Florida. Again, if you just joined us, Malachi Corley had nearly 1,300 yards last season at receiver for Western Kentucky. Left the field on the card. We take you back. This is the last play that Corley played in this game. You see the hit there. So this might have been where the injury occurred. You see the pass kind of deflected. He takes it, kind of takes a hit. Nothing that looks too major. We don't we didn't see him beyond that play. And I don't, I don't I don't really know. It's hard to it's hard to fathom what what went wrong again He left the field on a cart. We don't know anything beyond that at this point to be carted off on a regular looks like football play is, is not good signs, but you know Finding a way to galvanize the guys around you on the Western Kentucky offense on the sideline even the team itself You know losing a huge piece like that is going to affect you in some way But let's see the leadership of West Kentucky step up and see if they can still compete Missing their best guy. Trying another guy here in, in Kwan Powell, 5'9, 205 pound sophomore at running back here. USF isn't missing the beat though. They're continuing to do the things they've been preparing for all week. And you and, and it's gonna be tough to challenge to now that the players are gonna stack up. They have to be around play 50 or 55 offensively. And that Western Kentucky defense is gonna get tired eventually. They're loading up the box, excellent pressure there. They disguised who was gonna actually rush the quarterback and who was gonna come back to coverage there. You gotta have quick linebackers if you're gonna do that. Take a look here, Malik. Anytime you got the quarterback 20 yards away from the line of scrimmage trying to make a throw on his back foot, you know you're doing a great job up front, confusing the offensive line for that protection, but also not letting that young quarterback just sit back in the pocket and dice and slice. Get him off this spot, get him uncomfortable, and Western Kentucky has done a great job of doing that to save some time for the U, uh, the West Kentucky offense to get back on the field and try to make some plays. Katie Hutchinson moving to his right, calling for the fair catch as he makes it just across the 20 at about the 21 yard line. And Western Kentucky, again, needs to find a playmaker right now with Malachi Corley going into the locker room. They trail by 10 here at home. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network presented by the Home Depot. 17 7 our score here in Bowling Green. South Florida with the lead on the Hilltoppers. Now tomorrow at 1230 Eastern, catch a Serie A showdown as Inter and Fiorentina square off on CBS Sports Network and streaming live on Paramount+. Plus. Austin Reed leading his Western Kentucky offense back out of the field, looking for a new playmaker with Malachi Corley. Headed to the locker room. Reed escaping the pocket over the middle. He's got Smith. Pass complete. Pick up a first down and more as they get close to the 40-yard line. 
Great job coming out of a, a timeout. Being able to find your guy downfield, Austin Reed making plays outside the pocket, finding more time, getting his guys comfortable. This is what you want to see. Reed again looking long. Left side looking for Burt. A little bit too long, and it's incomplete. Amaris Brown in on the coverage for the Bulls. Now, if I'm head coach Tyson Helton, I want to be able to implement more RPOs, more screens, more things to get the playmakers involved outside of just trying to go straight drop back because you don't have the balance of a Malachi Corley keeping the defense on their toes. So everybody's playing a little bit top down. They're not letting a lot of things go behind them. So put some more screens, a little more interesting in the run game with the RPO, help Austin Reed out until he can find that next playmaker ever seen. Reed 7 of 17 for 92 yards. Hit as he throws, looking over the middle at the last second. But it's incomplete. They ran one of my favorite plays. We call it tuck at my high school, Lakewood High School in California. you got to go outside in and find your tech down. And Austin Reed has to be quicker because you don't have too many options based on a quick game type of play like that. Great job by the defensive line of USF not allowing Austin Reed to go through his whole progression. So this has been a balancing act between the intensity of the defense of USF and finding an answer when all things aren't going right on offense for Austin Reed in the Western Kentucky offense. So the OC, Drew Hollingshead, Formerly at Mississippi State. It's a Mike Leach disciple here. It was a pass over the middle to Dalvin Smith. And another first down here. Good third down conversion. Just the second on third down in the game for Western Kentucky. Logan Berryhill able to make the stop. Great job coming back to Dalvin Smith after that tough drop that he had over the middle of that dig route. Austin Reed still trusting his young guys and not giving up on them early. Reed again. You're on first down. Again looking long. Receiver out of bounds. Craig Burt, the intended target. You saw the official on the sideline without a hat it's because Burt was out of bounds and was now lo no longer an eligible receiver. As Tabin Ward on the coverage. The one thing you got to be careful about, especially when you lose your top playmaker, is putting the ball in the hands of your quarterback too much to require him to make too many plays. You still have a great offense where you can diversify. You can throw some screens. You can throw some RPOs. You don't always have to take that big shot and don't have to feel like you have to panic to do it either. And another timeout taken. It's the last one for South Florida with 846 remaining here in the half. Western Kentucky was getting ready to snap the ball here on second down. Really love the work by Todd Orlando and what he's been able to do with this defense, not allowing them to get whatever they want down the field. The secondary has done an excellent job on all the go routes of being hip to hip with the receiver. So even if it's a great pass, they're going to have to make an explanatory pass, a perfect pass to get these completions off. So that just shows that how well prepared the secondary of USF has been, but also getting pressure on Austin Reed, not allowing him to just drop back and slice and dice you all day so it's been a good compliment Todd Orlando came ready to go and now we got to see the response from this Western Kentucky offense and Austin Reed not depressed it's still early it's not even deep in the second quarter yet so he doesn't have to press to feel like he's got to throw the ball downfield and make uh, fantastic throws find your way through the offense like when that third down finding Dalvin Smith on the drag route to get the first more plays like that to help you out until you can find that next big play. Coach Orlando told us his number one priority with the defense that was the worst in the country last year was getting the players to be closer. As we get a run here, right side, breaking free across the 30, across midfield, and more. That was KD Hutchinson picking up a big first down as. Western Kentucky tries to be even more creative. This is what you're talking about. Get a nice end around on a reverse. This is similar to what you need to do to break up that monotonous of trying to throw a deep every play. Put a little reverse in there, and now you can come back with an explosive play right here. Empty backfield this time. Reed, dangerous throw on the right side. Jaden Curry able to make the play there for South Florida to deflect the pass. I like the idea of putting four to a side. You're trying to stress the defense to rotate, but you got guys in the same spot. I don't think that's quite what they have wanted, but you know, this goes back to USF being prepared after a big play, not to allow a bigger play or a touchdown, because you know they're coming right back with it. 
Andrew Curry, the junior, 5 foot 11, 200 pounds with the pass deflection there. Now on the carry here is Davion Urban Pondexter. Fifth year senior making a play. And it's Jalen Schuler making the tackle. Now we've got another big third down here for Western Kentucky as they are trying to find an answer. The guy I would go to is Poindexter in this situation. I got to be able to find ways to get the running game going, and Davion Poindexter is the answer to be able to get that done. He's got to help Austin Reed out, get the box loaded a little bit when you can run the ball better, and then these shots that he's taking on one-on-one -on -one can be a lot better. Western Kentucky will take a timeout here, draw something up on third down. Now you pulled out a reverse to, bit, to create a big play to get a first down here. What can you do in this situation? If I'm the offensive coordinator, I want to be able to get something that's easy for Austin to complete that may not have to be the whole first down. He may be able to throw something that's underneath and allow his playmakers on the, and the skill position players to go get the first down themselves. So not necessarily stressing your quarterback to get all of the yardage on third down, but maybe something that can get him something easy underneath and allow those guys to make those plays and get some run after the catch to make this first down happen for this Western Kentucky offense that really needs it. This is a very important drive that they have to end with points. I prefer it would be a touchdown, but a field goal would do as well. Today's red zone is brought to you by Verizon. See what Western Kentucky did last season in the red zone. Trying to pick up a first down here on third and five. They've got five first downs on this drive, but just seven in the game as Reed quickly fires right side, big hit, ball gets loose, incomplete. I know that's one that Austin Reed wants back. The ball kind of floated in the air. I think he became open faster than he anticipated because he was worried about taking depth away from the blitz that was coming, something that Austin Reed definitely wants back as a throw. But then again, it just shows USF is playing top down. They're not afraid of you throwing the ball over the head, so they're coming to make plays above the line of scrimmage and above the first down, and that's a great pass breakup by the USF defense. Yeah, Tamarcus Simpson with a big-time pass break up as we get a false start here on fourth down as they were attempting a field goal here false start offense number 73 five yard penalty remains fourth down so go from the 19 to the 24 west dorsey the right tackle the one called for the infraction for a team that ended the, their season so well against South Alabama in the bowl game, they look like the, the team that has the first-year head coach right now. USF is still playing efficient and poised and great on both sides of football. Western Kentucky is starting off slow right now. Lucas Carnero in for a 41-yard field goal, and it is good. So Western Kentucky closing the gap, gets back to within a touchdown, 7.37 to play in the half 17 to 10 bulls lead it over western kentucky <laughs> 10 play 56 yard drive ends in a field goal for western kentucky as they trail 17 to 10. Now next Sunday, our NFL on CBS Super Bowl season kicks off with a week one doubleheader. The early games are headlined by the Battle of Ohio between the Bengals and the Browns. Later, the defending NFC champion Eagles take on the Patriots. We can't wait for next Sunday and the NFL on CBS. As Western Kentucky. I don't want to say they're shell-shocked. I think there's been moments where they played well. I think they've actually played even better defensively than the score would indicate, Malik. But really, you wonder how demoralized this team might be after the loss of Malachi Corley to, uh, to an injury that we don't know what the injury is at this point. We just know that he was carted off the field earlier in the game as we get the return from Michael Duke's right side and brought down inside the 20-yard line. Now let's take a look at the South Florida offense, and it's time for Do Project Smarter, presented by Home Depot, and a phenomenal creative play 
for South Florida on the direct snap. Oh, the old Pop Warner distraction gadget play with the direct snap to the running back. This is the type of fun that Alex Galesh has added to a USF offense where we're going to throw a little bit of everything, a little distraction, a little hokey doke, but this is all about getting positive yardage and catching the defense off guard, keeping them on their toes, and then you can set up big plays afterwards. I mean, this is just great to watch from a first-year head coach. Byron Brown, pass completion on that left side, and good sniff out there from Anthony Johnson. Kind of trying to make up for allowing that long touchdown to Joffrey Brown earlier in the game. Quickly, already with the snap, and wouldn't go down, but they finally are able to smother him. And I got to say, Malik, this Western Kentucky defense has allowed a couple big plays, but everything else has been pretty solid. That's right. They found the answer after they get the, the fast-paced offense is to pressure through the middle, and it takes away a lot of the little things that they do from running right after a big play or RPO, or even for the quarterback to set in the pocket and get something off quick because they're relentless up front, and, and it's making Alex Galesh a little tight because he's like, hey, we got to move fast. We got to find a way to protect up front long enough so we can keep moving, but that's the great... Uh, uh, the great mind of a Tyson Summers defensive coordinator for Western Kentucky to figure out, okay, how do I slow it down? And it's been through the middle pressure and continuous pressure and, and not letting the uh, USF set in in their ways. Well, through that third down went awry for South Florida as Byron Brown took it out of bounds, did not have a play on a kind of a delayed pass play. So they're punting it away here. It's going to bounce over on the side to the 50. They're not even allowing KD Hutchinson to try to make a play. Punt goes all the way to the 34-yard line. Here we go. Great opportunity for this offense of Western Kentucky to find an answer, find a way to tie this game up and be able to have Austin Reed get comfortable. They did a great job defensively of getting a nice three and out. Now they're getting back on rhythm. So I'm expecting some big shots in, in this opening drive coming back after a nice uh, three-point drive to play before. 49-yard punt for South Florida's Andrew Stokes to Austin Reed. Was able to get his team down the field to at least get a field goal. Now he got a chance to find an equalizer here. Is Austin Reed looking, looking for a big play over the middle and step for step. I think excellent coverage there from Braxton Clark. I mean, this has been the story of today. The one-on-ones, the USF secondary being hip for hip, step for step, and making it tough to have Austin Reed find those easy completions down the field like he usually has. I mean, this US second, USF secondary is playing beyond, beyond what I thought they could be able to do in the first game, especially with so much turnover. Here's Step, who had the touchdown earlier, trying to pick up a step as he gets towards the 40 yard line and that's where they're going to give him just shy of it here and it'll be third down and a long five as Maris Brown able to get him out they may have found something running the ball outside they were getting stuffed in the middle and they find a nice little five yard run to get on the outside maybe they come back to it to open up some of that pass game that they desperately looking to get see what Tyson Helton Drew Hollingshead have in store for this third down play they're two of seven on third down in the game third down and five for the hilltop firing again over the middle dalvin smith's got it first down hilltoppers right at midfield here we go austin reed looking like austin reed knowing where he wants to go with the football and a great job by drew hollingshead to be able to calm him down give him some simple throws some slants uh put the run game involved and maybe even put a screen in there to add on to it andrew mataafa made the tackle on that last play ball start offense Number five, five-yard penalty remains first down. That might be the fourth or fifth fall start we've seen from this Western Kentucky offense. It's interesting to see how uh, how much anticipation they have when they can just, I mean, you have the ball on your side. You know when the snap count is happening. You don't have to jump. But this is definitely affecting the momentum of this offense with these simple five-yard penalties. They can't have that. That's the fourth penalty of the game for Western Kentucky. Pass on the left side, complete. That is Craig Burt Jr., the fifth-year senior from Columbus, Ohio, as Jalen Stokes is there for the tackle. 
That's what makes it hard when you have such a successful play and then you get a penalty. And then you go another successful play and then you get another penalty. It's like you're not moving. I, I, I think they've been in the middle of the field this whole drive so far. So hopefully they can not be able to compound mistakes. Complement each other. If you get a big play, let's continue to stay above the sticks and not behind the sticks. Four receivers here for the Hilltoppers. Reed firing right side. Oh, almost got it. Almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, right? It doesn't <laughs> count on the college football field. Great effort, but can't got to come down with it. I mean, these are the this is what they need to continue to be successful. Austin Reed, probably another throw he wants back because this man, he put it right in both of their hands. But man, he's taking a big hit. He's been taking shots all game. So, you know, when, there, there was a rough in the passer call earlier that I didn't think was one. That one I think actually might have been rough. Yeah, they, I mean, hey, if you've been hitting all day, I'm sure the reps are trying to be like, I don't want to give you a call every time. But that just shows you that they got to find a way to protect Austin Reed a little bit better because you're going to get frustrated the more you get hit. Another false start false penalty. Start. Oh Offense, God. number six, five-yard penalty remains third down. Malik, when you're a quarterback and you've had, a, you've got a game where you're having some issues with the false starts. What are you saying in the huddle? Well, right now it's coming down to leadership and calming the guys around you. Maybe we have to change the snap count, or maybe we have to find a way to not shoot ourselves in the foot. You know, the easiest way to stop or to start winning is to stop losing. And they're shooting yourself in the foot right here with these penalties one after another. Austin Reed can't get a rhythm doing that, so he has to be able to be the bad guy and tell you guys, hey, hold your water. Reed fires, pass complete, has got his man. Good pass completion there, that's Katie Hutchinson. And he's been involved quite a bit. Katie Hutchinson has, been a, has definitely been involved a lot, especially being a go-to when you're trying to find those answers. The crowd's not really feeling this decision right here, but hey, this is an opportunity for a, a veteran guy, right? A veteran guy to be able to calm his guys down on the sideline. This is where you're going to have to take advantage of it, right here. So here they go on fourth down. Reed is in there. And Reed is just going to have the quarterback keeper and he's going to get across the 40, and that's what he needed to pick up the first down, and they give it to him. Big first down there for Western. Yeah, give it to your, the most competitive guy on the field, and that's Austin Reed. If you have anybody, you know you can give it to this guy, and he's going to run in there head first. He's not even thinking about avoiding a tackle. He said, I'm getting this first down no matter what, and maybe that'll spark these guys around him to play for him. What's your take on a quarterback sneak from a, the pistol or shotgun? It's dangerous because you... <laughs> Yeah, unless you unless you weigh over a certain amount and you can fall forward, but it, let me get under center and get that Tom Brady quarterback sneak going. I mean, it worked. It worked quite a few times for the goat, didn't it? Oh yeah. Here's Reed, left side, wheel route, got his man. Marquis step gets inside the red zone to the 16-yard line. Andrew Mataafa forcing him out, but not before a huge gain for Western. A nice little misdirection throwback by the quarterback Austin Reed. These are the type of plays that they built success off of last year. Little gadget plays, different things to have the defense look at. You can't be conventional, especially when you're getting into the red zone, because you got to find wrinkles in order to find explosives. And that's one of the ones that you need to get this drive going to finish with some points. Let's finish with some points, Western Kentucky. Reed escapes, rolls to his right, finds some room. Nobody there to stop him. He's going to get to the pile. There you go. The gadget plays we've been saying have been working all day. They go right back to it with a fake reverse. It was so open. It pulled the defense so far away that Austin Reed had a clear lane, and he used that speed. He must have felt like, hey, a running back after that four for one. He said, let me come back and finish with a touchdown run to complement this and get another score on the board. Great job by the leader of your offense, leader of your team, Austin Reed getting it done. Austin Reed with a 16-yard touchdown run. He's like, I don't have my top playmaker. I'm going to be the top. <laughs> top playmaker. Oh, yeah. He said, let me scamper for a touchdown. If our receivers aren't going to catch the ball consistently, well, I got to put it in my own hands. And this is why he's one of the top quarterbacks in the country, because he's going to find a way to do it. Hey, we might not be able to slice and dice like we're used to. Hey, we may lose our top playmaker. Hey, may things may not be going well on the false starts and holding your water. But hey, 
I'm Austin Reed. Give me the football. I'm a competitive, the most competitive guy on the field. I'm going to find a way to win. And he's keeping this game intact and keeping it close. Now remember, scoring plays are reviewed here, so they are taking a look and double checking to make sure he did not go out of bounds. We'll get another look at it here. Great play design. You don't have many defenders left hanging on the backside. Outrace the big 300 pounder and finish strong. Did he get the ball across? Let's see right here. He has the ball in the right hand now. He didn't have it on the inside. Reaching, avoiding the tackle. Did he hit the pylon? Yeah, that's a good touchdown. Austin Reed, man, he said, hey, I'm not going out like this. I'm going out swinging. I'm going out against this team that many believe didn't have a chance. Well, hey, this is what you have the best quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks in the country for, that he's going to find a way. As you can tell, you get a fake double reverse coming around. You get a play action. They, they did a good job, USF, covering it, but they didn't account for the quarterback, which is one of the hardest guys to account for when he can run like he showed off there. And, hey, he got a little speed to him, too. The ruling on the field of a touchdown is confirmed. So Western Kentucky, who I thought really needed a touchdown on this drive, able to make it, and they're an extra point away from equalizing here the South Florida Bulls, who dominated that first quarter offensively. Reed finally getting his offense going here in this second quarter. And shout out to that defense, getting a good three and out and getting changing the field position so Austin Reed can operate. It is good. 3.04 remaining here in Bowling Green. We're tied at 17. Finding a way for the Austin Reed to become that guy. He's got to continue to do that if they want to pull out a victory. All knotted up at 17 here in Bowling Green. Week one, college football. We knew it would be exciting. Didn't expect South Florida to be leading most of the way. Austin Reed, 16-yard touchdown run, 12 of 28, 162 yards on the game. Hoping to lead his team back here after trailing by 10 for most of this first half. Now coming up at halftime in just a bit, it's the Ram Trucks halftime report in the studio. Brent Stover, Kevin Carter, and Beanie Wells back in our New York studios getting ready to break this one down and catch you up on all the happenings around college football. That is the Ram halftime report. Let's see how the USF offense responds. A couple of uh, stopped possessions before. See the youth of the quarterback in Byron Brown. Let's see how he matures being able to put together a drive right here because Western Kentucky is coming on their heels. You know, it, I hate using this cliche as we get South Florida on offense. Missed tackle there as we get the run on first down from Naquan Wright. Upton Stout there to make the tackle. I hate using the cliche a tale of two quarters, but it really has been when you look at what's happened offensively. Remember, we said USF dominated that first quarter a ton of yards. Western Kentucky, though, in the second quarter, 161 yards and nine first downs. South Florida, 12 yards, zero first downs in the second quarter. Yeah, this is just showing that where both teams are, are really growing. And one's trying to get better, and the other one's trying to find their way. And this is what happens in the first game of the season. You're not going to have everything perfect. you got to get through some wrinkles. But West Kentucky's coming on strong, and USF is showing their youth a little bit. Byron Brown picking up a first down here for South Florida. Got the slide in. So first down here from just across the 35-yard line. Penalty markers come out late as the throw goes away. Looks like we're going to potentially get a holding call here against South Florida. We'll wait for it from our officials on the field. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Number 73. 15-yard penalty. Remains first down. That's the left tackle, Donovan Jennings, with the personal foul. The graduate student from right in Tampa. Donovan Jennings is actually one of the leaders of this unit that the team was very excited to get back coming off of injury. Uh, it's something that, you know, hands to the face, it happens sometimes. I mean, those guys are big and they're fighting in there. But Donovan Jennings is the guy that they're going to lean on all season. It was one of the holdovers from last year. You know, we talked about all the transfers that South Florida has going into this game. From the center to the right, all transfers. Left tackle Donovan Please Jennings the and the left guard. Two minutes and 13 seconds. The left guard two Andrew Kilfoyle are the returners. 
Thank you. And actually, Jennings and Kilfoyle both played together for a year at Gaither High School in Tampa. So you've got two true Tampa kids That's right. for that South Florida Bulls team. And you can bet they want to be a part of this culture change under Alex Golish as they try to reinvent themselves as a program as Byron Brown. You're jumping into a two-minute situation here with the new rules implemented. The clock doesn't stop after a first down. How does a young quarterback in Alex Golesh in his first-year offense be able to put together the first two-minute drive of the season? Now we are under two minutes here in the second quarter. As we're going to pass to the left side, complete just past the 30-yard line. Upton Stout and TJ Springer both there here. Now remember, the clock does not stop on first downs for a majority of the game, but inside two minutes, you go back to the old rule that if you do get a first down, the clock will stop. Good opportunity for Western Kentucky to call a timeout because that, I think they feel like they can get the ball back with some time for Austin Reed to operate, try to get some points before half. We'll step aside here for 30 as Western Kentucky thinks it over. Back here in Bowling Green, Western Kentucky, South Florida all knotted up at 17, a minute 42 to go in the half. Alex Sabario, Malik Zaire, and our entire CBS crew happy to bring you week one football here on CBS Sports Network. Big third down here. South Florida, third down in a mile. Trying to escape as Brown finds some room left side, still looking to make a throw, still on his feet, finally able to be brought down. Did gain a little bit there, but it's still going to be fourth down, but Brown just trying to make a play, trying to make something happen late in this game and probably trying to tick off some a lot of clock as much as he could. Yeah, the best thing he did was not run out of bounds. He was able to kill some clock to allow the team to be able to shorten the time that Austin Reed has to get the ball back on offense. But this just shows just how athletic and creative that Byron Brown can be, being able to slip tackles and make it hard for the defense to bring him down, even if they have a beat on him. So this is just showing that, hey, it's okay that you didn't turn the ball over in a situation like this. You killed some clock and you're allowing our defense to change the field and get a good start on two minutes. Now, unfortunately for Western Kentucky the clock continued to tick so we're under a minute to go here as the punt gets away it's a good one. Oh what a hit there to prevent any type of real return. Matthew Hill making a big play there for South Florida. Yeah I mean changing the field position you got you not only was it a great punt, but a great finish. And this is what you need to do if you're any gunner out there in high school or in college. Ooh. You're looking to run through the guy. You're not looking to break down and stop and give him a chance to react. And that's a great shot to put him in a tough field position. I mean, you got to go, what, 90 yards to get a touchdown in under two minutes? Tough to do. Now, that was a dangerous play right there that Hill made because he went helmet to helmet. Slip one past the ref on that one. Yeah. When you're moving fast like that, you're going to miss a lot. So a long field in front of the Hilltoppers here. Need to go 88 yards. We'll get a run on, on first down here. T.J. Robinson making the tackle here. And it doesn't look like Western Kentucky is in any type of hurry. And it does seem like some of the Hilltoppers are already making their way to the tunnel. Yeah, you got the quarterback in the tunnel already in the... <laughs> The rest of the offense is on the field. <laughs> so uh, it must be Austin Reed want to get on that chalkboard and talk to his team right away. But man, what a tail of two, two quarters like you had said, and it's going to be an interesting photo finish to, to end this game. Austin Reed making his way to the tunnel like he needs to use the facilities before <laughs> the end of the first quarter, man. Seven, 17 apiece here on the hilltop in Bowling Green. USF with the early advantage. Western Kentucky losing Malachi Corley. But they continue to fight, able to find the equalizer. It's been fun, a tale of two quarters. We'll see what the second half has in store. Ram Halftime Report is next on CBS Sports Network. You are watching the Ram Trucks Halftime Report on CBS Sports Network. 
And a welcome inside our New York studios. Brent Stover alongside Kevin Carter and former Buckeye great. His name is Beanie Wells. Good ball game. Deadlocked at 17. They're in Bowling Green, Kentucky. What jumps off the page for you? You know, for me, it was all about USF and what they were able to do, controlling the line of scrimmage, running the football. But then all of a sudden, we saw Austin Reed, one of the nation's leading passers, put on a Superman cape. His top receiver goes down, and he said, I'm going to put my team on my back, and I'm going to get him back in this game. The huge disparity, though, is running the football. USF, one. 70 to 67. I believe Western Kentucky has to run the ball and settle down a little bit more. Austin Reed has thrown for 162, just 12 of 28, but he's got his team in a tie ball game two quarters in. College football on CBS Sports Network is presented by the Home Depot, Western Kentucky and South Florida. At halftime, we're all knotted up at 17 between the Hilltoppers and the Bulls. As we welcome you back into the broadcast booth, here as halftime comes to a close, Alex Savario alongside former Notre Dame quarterback Malik Zaire. And Malik, again, the cliche is a tale of two ha halves, but in this case, we've got a tale of two quarters. South Florida dominated the first quarter, then Western Kentucky finally started to turn it on offensively. Yeah, definitely tale of two quarters. USF started fast. That's, that's what you want to see. And Western Kentucky, being the more experienced team, started a little slower, but they, they turned it on the second quarter. You see Chaffrey Brown on a nice go route. They need to do more of that with Byron Brown, making some simple explosive plays, but that's how you start off with a first year quarterback full time and then Austin Reed this is where the big play potentially happened with Malachi Corley to take him out of the game but you see USF around the football and then you get back to Austin Reed and making this gadget play gadget plays have been working against this USF defense without Malachi Corley Austin Reed said I'll take it myself for the touchdown scramble and look at that finish that swag right there Austin Reed looking good in the second quarter Let's look at the Snickers first half stats here. You can see Western Kentucky starting to turn it on in the passing yards. Things starting to even up a little bit in the total yards. It had been USF with nearly 200 yards in that first quarter. Penalties, kind of a story in the game. South Florida a little bit more with the personal fouls. Western Kentucky, it's been the offensive line with the false starts. They need to figure that out. But it's been a very interesting first half, to say the least, between these two teams. Very interesting first, first half, and maybe the second half will be even more interesting. So we'll see again. Western Kentucky deferred after winning the winning the toss so they will receive here in the second half so Western Kentucky were, were able to get the equalizer and now they'll have an opportunity to try to take the lead here to start this second half Alex Sabario Malik Zaire the entire CBS crew here in Bowling Green Kentucky as we get you ready for second half Week one of college football, again, South Florida coming in, one of the worst defenses, in fact, no, the worst defense in the country last year. Todd Orlando taking over. They've made some really great plays defensively in this game, facing a Western Kentucky offense that was highly touted, picked to win Conference USA, a new-look Conference USA this year with no, uh, no UTSA in the fold anymore, so a lot more attention being paid to Austin Reed and Malachi Corley. Corley's gone out with an injury. So now Western Kentucky looking to find playmakers. And Tyson Helton told us, he's like, I don't know what type of team I got right now. And both coaches, I think, echoed similar statements. I just kind of see what my team looks like uh, once we get started. So Reed with the handoff here on first down as we get started with second half of play. And, you know, one of the things that they wanted to emphasize with us, both South Florida and Western Kentucky, is that you know, we talk about the offense, we talk about the passing yards, we talk about the wide receivers, but they really try to use the run to set things up in the past. That's right. That's what's so surprising about this Western Kentucky first half is only 67 yards rushing. That's not like Clay Helton, but they're going to make sure they get some run yards in the second half. Davion Irvin Poindexter able to break free, break a couple of tackles and pick up a first down there. Took them a while to get their offense going. It was a three and out on their first drive of the game. So far, a first down here on their first drive of the second half as Reed back to pass looking. Plenty of time. Fires over to the left side of Poindexter with the reception, but it's behind the line of scrimmage, so loss of yardage there here for the Hilltoppers. What's going to help Austin Reed in the second half is finding that run game. They started off having a good run to get a first down, but don't lose the momentum and don't shy away from running the football because it's only going to help Austin Reed late in game and also help the offense get a rhythm where guys can get things going. So here we go with a second and 12 for the Hilltoppers. Reed 
out of the gun, looking, firing quickly, right side, kind of a low throw, but Lou Smith in perfect position there. A former Ohio State Buckeye, he's from Huber Heights, Ohio, the fifth year senior, able to make the grab. Huber Heights, Ohio, my neck of the woods in Dayton, Ohio, being able to make plays all over the world, man, we love to see it. Penalty marker is out as Reed fires deep, nearly intercepted. Getting his hands on Outside. it there. Defense, number 14, 15-yard penalty. Correction, five-yard penalty. Replay, first down. Tavin Ward able to get his hands on it there. But the penalty goes against South Florida here. So Western Kentucky going to get a first and five here. Yeah, don't be, don't be uh, surprised to see that run game be implemented right down, getting into the red zone, keeping the defense honest. And we got a pitch, and oh, a little fleet flicker action, firing right side and kind of miscommunication on the route there. He was looking for River Helms on that right side, but his back was turned to the play. Young guy got to get his head turned around, a nice action reverse, fleet flicker, trying to sneak the wide down the, right down the sideline, except he's got to turn his head around. Maybe a, a part of still learning the offense and, and getting ingratiated with a lot of these younger guys. So a second and five here for the toppers. Reed, quickly left side. Pass complete to Smith. Breaks free down the sidelines. And dives. Touchdown. There you go. That's what you want. That's how you start a second half coming out, firing on all cylinders and getting the ball to perimeter. Shout out to the receivers blocking for Dalvin Smith on that right there. I mean, look at the block made on this RPO right there. I mean, great chip block and be able to run the sideline, stretch the defense, and that's the one-on-ones that my skill players are better than yours. And they came up with a great RPO touchdown right there. 42 yards on the pitch and catch there. And great run in there from Smith. A lot of yak there for the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Malachi Corley isn't the only one that can yeah, do yak. He was the king of the he was the king of the yak, wasn't he? That's right. And it looks to trickle down to these other receivers on the team as well. With Alvin Smith now four receptions, 86 yards, and that touchdown from 42 yards away. And Western Kentucky with their first lead of the football game. That's how you gas it, get to the end zone and start off the right way and be on top on that scoreboard just like you want. West Kentucky, great game plan coming out of half. Seventeen unanswered points scored by the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Let's take a look at the touchdown here for Western as Dalvin Smith scoring from 42 yards away, diving towards the end zone and getting in. Remember, Malachi Corley has already left the game. And now Dalvin Smith, after scoring a touchdown, headed to the locker room. And that's where he is now. That's the only update we have for you. But Western Kentucky losing really their top two targets right now. Malachi Corley out in the first half. We get over had nearly 1,300 yards last year receiving. Dalvin Smith was a 35 reception guy. 443 yards and four touchdowns last year for the redshirt junior from Glasgow High School here in Kentucky. And man, if you're Tyson Helton, you're the what's going on right now? First game of the year, home opener, and I'm losing my top two targets. Basically, you're losing 80%, 70% of your offensive production just from those two guys alone because of the impact they had last season. So the challenges are stacking up for this Western Kentucky offense, and Austin Reed has got to keep finding answers. Dalvin Smith, the leading receiver in the game, four receptions for 86 yards in the touchdown. Malachi Corley, before he went out, already had four False receptions. Start. Offense, number 73, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Four receptions and 55 yards. So... You know, the production, at least from your receivers, is not looking good. And again, we talked about Ty Tyson Hilton and, and, and Drew Hollingshead was talking about trying to find guys that could step up beyond their veteran guys. You know, a lot of young guys and transfers coming into the fold as we get a run here on first and 15. 
now they have no choice. They got to step up. There's nobody that's going to lead the way to show them how to do it. And you're going to see young guys grow up a lot tonight. 11-yard pickup on first down after a false start penalty. And now Byron Brown breaks free and then picks up the first down, gets it close to midfield as South Florida tries to get back to that fast-paced offense that we saw in that first quarter that led to uh, nearly 200 yards in that first quarter. Run to the left side here by Naquan Wright. Upton Stout able to make the play. Expect a, a shot to come pretty soon. They've been pretty effective running the football. Byron Brown is finding some hidden yardage, being able to scamper. The one guy that don't they don't account for defensively is the quarterback, and he's been able to show that in this early on in this drive. So now they're going to tighten that box, start bringing the pressure like the first half. But let's see if they try something deep on the outside. Second down and four here for the Bulls. We've given up 17 unanswered. Their offense needs a jolt. Pass complete right side. That might do it as they get into Hilltopper territory. Reception made by Sean Atkins. Sean Atkins, a part of the what they call the misfits yeah. uh, of the receiver unit. And he's the leader. He was a previous walk-on, kept his number 38 to, to remind him every day of where he came from. And he's been a great, great impact on this receiver room. And it shows today. We have another Hilltopper down on the field. They're in the defensive backfield here. It's Talik Allen, the redshirt sophomore from Fort Valley, Georgia. These seem to be the only thing stopping both of these offenses from continuously running down the field as fast as possible has been injury timeouts or penalties. But other than that, I mean, the speed at which both of these teams have been operating from is something that I'm sure the rest of college football and is witnessing and seeing things that they could probably add to their own game. So he comes off the field, does Allen. Already four plays running, 38 yards picked up on the drive. Here for the Bulls as Byron Brown again wins the quarterbacking job. Gary Bohannon was also in that quarterback competition. It was very interesting to see that you had two guys playing quarterback stay in a situation that South Florida was in. As we get a run here on first down. You know, in a transfer portal world, Malik Burton. Guys are going to go in and can potentially go wherever they get a phone call from. You got a new head coach coming in, running a completely different offense. And here's two guys willing to stick around and see it through as Brown tucks it, decides to run, takes it outside with a 30, about the 29 yard line. Tells you a lot about the character, both those guys. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they know who they got coming in. I would want to stay, too, if I had a guy, especially an Alex Golish, that's been able to create the number one offense in the country, especially on points and yards. So it's really cool to see those guys stick around in the, in the day and age where you can just get up and leave like a JT Daniels and be on your fifth school in five years. So not that that's technically true, but it just shows you just the commitment they have to the culture they're building. They want to build Champa Bay back up to prominence, especially following what the Buccaneers did not that long ago. Fourth down and inches here. The Bulls two for two on fourth down, and now they're going to take a timeout here. Discuss what they want to do. So we'll step aside as Alex Golis brings his offense to the sideline to figure out what they want to do here. Hilltoppers up seven. Well, Alex Golis, nice debut offensively here for his First game as a head football coach. So you see Josh Gordon, the offensive coordinator there, as they make a decision on what to do here on fourth down. Tyson Helton. Boy, what a smart and passionate defensive coordinator Tyson Helton. Uh, pardon me, Tyson Summers is. As Oh, man. He was so fun mad, to talk to. Mad scientist. He's a guy that really knows his football team, knows his defensive unit. But they've got burned twice on fourth down. USF is two for two on fourth down right now. Here we go. 
Byron Brown finding some room, breaks free, nobody there to stop him. Touchdown. Got him again with the quarterback running back option on fourth and short. They ran it for the first touchdown, and they've run it again for another touchdown. They've got to find a way to, to defend this a lot better. This time they just said, we're going to go in the round with the quarterback, get the numbers, and nobody was to account for the quarterback, the hardest person to account for in the run game. And it shows Byron Brown outflanking the defense, and they've scored and converted in the short yardage on fourth down. Tyson Summers got to find a way to fix that if they want any chance to slow this team down. 28 yards on the touchdown run for Byron Brown. And with the point after, we have the equalizer. We're all knotted up at 24 here in Bowling Green. That's right. Put the quarterback in the position on both sides to win. And Byron Brown is showing that I can bounce back to Austin Reed. Check me out. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. What's your beef? By PNC Bank. Rooted in communities big and small. And by Snickers. Snickers satisfies. We're now all knotted up at 24, back in Bowling Green, South Florida, Western Kentucky. We told you we'd see points. We'd show you some offense. That's exactly what we're starting to get. It's been back and forth with 17 unanswered, and then South Florida able to find another touchdown here thanks to their quarterback in Byron Brown as we get the kickoff here with 10-11 to go in the third quarter. Western Kentucky's offensive Players have been dropping like flies here in this game as we get a return to that left side. That was Elijah Young on the return here. Let's talk about the quarterback, the youngster Byron Brown winning the quarterback job. And what a job he's done making decisions running the football. Alex Gold said he's earned his right to start and he started off fast, finding the guys downfield, being a patient runner with the football. After that pick, I love his poise and the way he bounced back, just doing his job, doing what the allowing what the defense gives them and he's making it look easy and not like a, a first year guy coming out here to start for the full time so it's it's definitely a quarterback battle going on both sides of the ball and it's going to be a photo finish it's about who has the ball last at this point brown leading the team in rushing right now as we get the reception on that right side that is katie hutchinson who's been very active the red shirt freshman from hamilton georgia and we get a Bulls player down, but finishing the thought on Byron Brown, again, leading the team in rushing right now. 15 rushes, 90 yards, and two touchdowns on the ground. Had 57 yards rushing alone on that drive. Brown, 8 of 15, 121 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. And, and you're right. And, and we talked about it during the break. We actually had a really good quarterback conversation <laughs> during the commercial. And you were, and I, I mentioned to you that I think he's like he looks like a pro running quarterback in that he picks his spots to run he's very patient waiting for the the hole to develop for him and when he's got the first down he slides and he looks like a pretty good slider oh yeah he's definitely not looking to be greedy out there when it comes to the run spots because i mean 15 rushing attempts as a quarterback position is it's not really what you want to do, but when you have a guy that's smart with the football, knows himself enough to know where he is on the field to get the yards needed to get down, it just shows the decision-making as, as, as a running part of your game that he's developed really well, and Alex Golish is not shying away from calling the runs for his quarterback, and it seems to be really effective, especially in the short yardage where Tyson Summers, it looks like they got you right there, where it comes to putting you in a position where they're giving you the same play every time. Time. So Tyson Summers has got to find a way to account for that quarterback in the run game, and it definitely will help in the second half. Amaris Brown on the turf right now for South Florida. 5'10", 197-pound junior from Tampa. Transfer from Kansas State from a couple of years ago. Stuck around after this last offseason as well. Made a couple big plays early on in the game as well. Breaking the ball up, being step for step not allowing anything behind him. I mean, he's been having a really good day. Hopefully he gets up pretty soon. And Brown does get up and he's, he's coming off the field, but there have been quite a few kind of key injuries in this game. 
but most specifically that of the offense of Western Kentucky losing Malachi Corley, their Blitnikoff, Maxwell, and Werfel watch list wide receiver. First team all conference USA with nearly 1,300 yards receiving. He is out, left the field on a cart earlier. Now Reed looking, see who he targets this time. He's got a man. It's Easton Messer. Find some room and able to get the first down as he crosses the 30 yard line and gets out of bounds. Great job of finding your underneath, taking what the defense gives you. Austin Reed preached a lot about mastering the offense and, and being able to take this next level in his game. And that's how you do it. Just take the easy throws because you don't go broke taking a profit. And finding a hole developed late, Davion Irvin Poindexter, the fifth year senior, getting free and picking up another first down before DJ Gordon, the fourth, brings him down. 14 yards on the carry. Now pass left side. Little bubble action here to Messer. Able to lose a defender for a second, pick up about six. There you go, nickel and dime, nickel and dime. You don't have to do anything too extravagant trying to push the ball downfield. You can get the same distance by being able to spread the football out horizontally. Throw out a bubble screen, allow your guys to block, get involved with the game, and also be able to use Poindexter to get those yards inside and eat up well. Dalvin Smith is back in the game on the lower part of your screen there right on the hash mark. So whatever he was dealing with after that touchdown that shot, saw him go to the locker room, good to see him back. He was questionable return. He has returned. Poindexter, oh, look at that hit. Lowers his shoulder. That's what you want to see from your running back. Picking up a first down and a little bit more. And showing that defense is like, hey, I'm going to run you over too. Yeah, Marquis Step is a low. And every time he runs, I just feel like he's making the sound. <laughs> Because he's a yeah. physical running back making plays. It I, looks good. I said Poindexter. I meant step there as we get to a, a pass attempt here to Dalvin Smith on that right side. And the pass is incomplete as Dalvin tries to get back into the fold here offensively as the Hilltoppers move the football here. All tied up at 24 here. Western Kentucky turning up the heat just like the heat is turning up in this booth right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting a little warm. Penalty marker down over near the 23-yard line. I mean, pardon me, the 27-yard line. Officials talking something over here. But again, earlier in the game, again, Malachi Corley out of the game for Western Kentucky. So Austin Reed has had to try to find some new targets to get this offense going, which was sputtering in that first quarter. Pass interference. Offense. The pass was beyond the line of scrimmage. And there was blocking downfield. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. I think he meant a legal man downfield. Not a pass interference. I think it was a legal man downfield on the screen. Got to tell the guys to hold your water. Don't go beyond five yards. Let us... Let's get the pass out. Or the quarterback has to make a faster decision on the run pass option. So now we're we get whistles from the sidelines here. And now it's going to be reviewed. What they're looking is that play at the bottom of the screen. Right before the pass attempt, you saw that block there. I don't know if we can get. You know, it's always splitting hairs when you're running this type of offensive run pass option when you're trying to get it on the outside. So you got to be able to have everything happen perfect. And <laughs> that's where the contact is right there. Oh, man. Tough call to make considering you're that throwing was your step. screen. Yeah. Um, I don't think you'll see a call like this often, but I mean, if he was illegal, illegally blocking him downfield before the pass, like, it's just it's just hard. It's just hard to call. Well, what's interesting is it, it you know, you see pass interference when it's the intended receiver. That right. was someone who likely could have made an interception on the play if he wasn't if he wasn't hit. After review, the ruling on the field was confirmed. The ball was touched beyond the line of scrimmage. First down. 
Okay. All right. Well, it seems as he didn't throw it behind the line of scrimmage. He threw it above the line of scrimmage. So it's considered pass uh, like forward pass yeah and pass interference okay. because that, that that defender had an opportunity to make a play on the football because it was above the line of scrimmage okay that that makes sense but it definitely puts them way behind the sticks now you got to get creative when it's second and forever or first well, for, and forever we have ball in the 49 yard line long way to go here reed steps up as the pressure comes got a man left side he got it what a play Touchdown, Western Kentucky. So after a long delay, Austin Reed says, I'm going to throw one up. Big play there. Touchdown. That's what you call a dime. Right on the money. Great defense, but better offense in the ball placement. Allowed his receivers to carry it all the way into the end zone. This is why he was the nation's best passer last year. And he's got that competitive drive to know how to gut the defense. Even after something like that, his first to 25, you can run a ton of things. Austin Reed said, that's okay, hold my beer, and I'm going to make this play happen, and we're going to go up on the scoreboard no matter what. You love to see that from a quarterback that's experienced like Austin Reed. Great job. That was Musa Berry with the 51 yard touchdown reception from Austin Reed. 31 to 24 with 8.03 to go here in the third quarter. Look at him air it out. Austin Reed showing why he's one of the top ones in the country. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network presented by the Home Depot. Thirty-one twenty-four. the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky get the lead back on a 51-yard touchdown. Let's take a look at our Geico difference makers. We'll start with Byron Brown, the sophomore quarterback for South Florida. 121 yards, a touchdown, and a pick with 90 on the ground. And then on the other side, a quarterback, Austin Reed. He's been great. 287 yards and two touchdowns, including one from Musa Berry that you just saw from 51 yards away to reclaim the lead for Western Kentucky. As we get the kickoff here, and that one's gonna sail over the head of the return team and into the end zone for the touchback. And Austin Reed had to deal with all kinds of stuff in that first quarter's offense kind of sputtering, but Reed has started to figure it out and starting to find some new targets because Malachi Corley not available to him after a couple of plays here. Now he's looking all over the field and finding some plenty of targets. This is a guy that knows how to distribute the football evenly. So playing in this offense, you're going to have a lot of different options. This is like the Austin Reed variety show. He's pulling out guests from the stands, pulling out guests from class, off the <laughs> sideline, making it happen with whoever he needs to to get it done. And that's why he's the top quarterback in the country. Austin Reed looking at the home ex class down, <laughs> down the down the hallway just looking for wide receivers to play for him right now throws that one incomplete does Byron Brown as he looks to respond here Desmond Baker there in on the coverage I want to make a note on Musa Berry who made that catch a 51 yard touchdown reception Musa Berry is a redshirt freshman 6'2 190 pounds from Dacula Georgia played at Mars Hill College last year as we get a reception over the middle and it's incomplete. Good defensive play there by Upton Stout, the North Texas transfer. Musa Berry, last year, appeared in four games at Mars Hill, had 30 yards receiving total on the season, <laughs> had 51 yards on, the, on that touchdown grab. So... Showing the transfer works. <laughs> I think it's Austin Reed being your quarterback might be the answer. That might be a team in... And Mars College that runs a slot T or something doesn't throw the ball. Nevertheless, here's a throw right here, left side. It's complete. Pass complete to Sean Atkins. 
T.J. Springer there to make the play. And being a former quarterback, you love to see when the quarterbacks are controlling the game on both sides. It's going to take a quarterback to win this one because it seems that the offense is flowing well through both quarterbacks right now. But Austin Reed is just playing out of his mind. And the confidence he has to make some of these throws when they don't look open just shows the, the maturity and the eliteness in his arm that he's showing off today. So here to punt it away, here's Andrew Stokes. Katie Hutchinson back to receive the punt here for Western Kentucky. A fair catch going to be called. No one going to give him room to make it, so it's going to bounce. And it's going to roll inside the 20-yard line at about the 19, and that's where Western Kentucky will take over with a seven-point lead. Let's send it back to our New York studios for an update on Ohio State and Indiana. Brent Stover, take it away. All right, thanks, Brent. 31-24, our score here. Western Kentucky looking to capitalize and increase their lead here. Remember, they were trailing in the early stages of this game with an offense that was sputtering and one that nearly looked dear in the headlights once they lost Malachi Corley. But Austin Reed has stepped up like the veteran leader that he is and been able to make some plays as Elijah Young on the carry picks up about three yards on first down as Jalen Schuler with the tackle. It's definitely a method to the madness when he ran off the field before half was even over. He must have really drew up the plays they came out in the second half and were effective with. So it just shows you that maybe he was out there thinking a little bit ahead. He was on some chess instead of checkers. So you're, you're not saying he was there to get in line first for, <laughs> for the restroom. Maybe both because it was pretty early. <laughs> Jamil Sanders on the turf now for South Florida. With 6.33 to play here in this third quarter, we've got a second and seven coming up here for the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. And I think one of the things I find interesting about this game, Malik, is that, you know, South Florida really, I thought, threw a couple of haymakers early on this Western Kentucky team. And it's one, you know, both on defense and on offense. Remember, they scored on their first drive of the game, the first drive of the Alex Golesh regime. And now they're in a situation where they are not looking as efficient offensively as they did early in the game and Western Kentucky looks like the team that is picked to finish first in Conference USA this year. Absolutely. I think what's happened was is that Western Kentucky's defense has locked in and when you have figured out basically the, the base of the offense it's easy for them to be able to line up and continue to make the plays because they know what's coming. That's great preparation from Tyson Summers and for Alex Golish he's got to find a way to continue to get the ball rolling on offense because the one thing about a fast paced offense like that is that it's real simple. So it doesn't take a lot to defend because of the method that you're running the offense as. But once a team locks in on that and they got the beat on what you're trying to do got to find different ways maybe formationally maybe some explosive plays from your quarterback get back to the quarterback run game but it got to find ways to get this defense West Kentucky defense off balance so you can get back to running the fast paced explosive plays let's take a look at the poll to start the season in Conference USA remember brand new Conference USA with a lot of newcomers like Liberty New Mexico State uh, all uh, all in the fold now along with Sam Houston and Jacksonville State Western Kentucky getting 18 of the 22 first place votes <laughs> with Liberty getting the other four. So a lot of attention being paid to this Western Kentucky team that was right in the mix along with UTSA last year. And when you look at all these other teams, you, you wonder where everyone's going to fit. Sam Houston was one of the best FCS schools in the country over the last decade. And when you look at the new faces in the American Conference, look, it's a lot of former Conference USA folks. UTSA, UAB, North Texas, FAU, Rice, Charlotte, all from Conference USA making the move to the American. It's a, it's a lot of shuffling, a yeah. lot of shuffling. But I do think having the expectations now that everybody has you as the favorite, it changes that dynamic of your team to where you got to come out and play every week because the target is bigger and bigger on your back. And Reed knows it. He's 7 of 10, 125 yards and two touchdowns in this third quarter alone. Pass a little bit high and incomplete looking for Dalvin Smith. Good to see him back on the field. They got to take some of the butter off the gloves of these receivers on the <laughs> Western Kentucky offense. I mean, either Austin Reed is throwing absolute dimes or they got a little nervousness uh, around catching and making the run after the catch. So you got to catch the ball first before you turn around and look for space to run. Something that young guys are learning as they get older and experienced in college football. Western Kentucky three of nine on third downs in this game as Reed comes 
into position here on a third down and seven from their own 22. Reed, a couple of extra steps on the drop, looking, firing, a little bit too far of a leading throw, looking for Trevor Borland, the transfer from Buffalo. Well, Tyson Helton, I would like to get on Austin a little bit about just finishing that play. That's something that he needs to be able to complete to continue a drive like this because at the end of the day, you want to separate yourself with another score right here. Okay. So fourth down and seven here for the Hilltoppers. They are punting the football away. Sean Atkins back deep to receive this one. Able to grab it and swallow it up immediately after. And the next drive for the South Florida Bulls will start inside the 35-yard line. So this is what's on tap tomorrow here on CBS. Northwestern taking on Rutgers. That's at noon Eastern. Followed by Oregon State and San Jose State. That's tomorrow on CBS. So here's a look at what's going on this weekend. Michigan State defeating Central Michigan. And Michigan with the win over East Carolina. J.J. McCarthy with a big game with three touchdowns. Things off to a good start. Of course, Ohio State in action against Indiana as we speak. 20 to 3 advantage. Talk about the Hoosiers. Tough scheduling. San Jose State coming off of week one playing a USC. Then week two, you got Oregon State. Man, they're playing some tough competition early on in college football already. Pass complete on that left side. We get started with the next South Florida drive here. Got our green wall at the tight end. I'm noticing that. USF's offense is trusting Byron Brown to start spreading the football outside of the hashes to open up that box a little bit, get the, get the ball rolling a little bit more. They'll put Greenwald in motion to get the play from the sidelines. Now look at the numbers to the top of the, top of the field. You got three for two. They got to make an adjustment to even that out. Third and three here for the Bulls. They are three of 12 on third downs in this game. Oh, a fumble here off of the snap, and Brown's got to scoop it up, find some room, get close to the sticks. What an effort. They push him forward, and he gets the first down. No. Western Kentucky was trying to make it sound like they grabbed the football out of his hands, but no, they're going to give him the first down. Oh, man, what a great effort by your quarterback, dropping the snap, finding a way to run. Oh, they, make, oh, they might be calling this differently. Western Kentucky University is challenged that the quarterback's knee was down as he was picking up the football. The previous play is under review. So we'll have to take a look at that as they've challenged the play in the field. And you can see the stretch. I mean, just that's when the ball came loose. So it wasn't a fumble. It's either a first down or he's down here. Take a look. Oh, it's oh. close. Well, it was before pick, he picked it up. Yeah, I think that's a live football, but you got to talk about this effort. I mean, you got everybody, the chaos, the bullets are flying. This is stuff you can't teach, and this is probably what was able to convince Alex Golish that this is the right guy to play because when things don't go right, Byron Brown can find an answer or a way to make it happen, and right there is a prime example. Drops the snap. Stays up. Look at that. That's that's a uh, oh my goodness. That's hot yoga twice a week right there to be able to be flexible to bend down and not touch the ground and then make a athletic play to get a first down. I mean, hey, that galvanizes the team behind you. Guys are excited that you're able to make a little play like that. That can lead to maybe an explosive coming out of this. That's hot yoga or stretching one of the two. <laughs> I don't know one of those. He's been he's been working on that uh, flexibility for sure. Because I know me, I probably would have had my knee in the ground to secure the football. But, hey, you got a guy that's an athlete. He wants to play for his team. And the effort is just oozing through the field right now. And, the, and USF is eating off of that. So under five minutes to go here in this third quarter. 
Western Kentucky with the lead, South Florida. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Instant replay stopped the game prior to the challenge by Western Kentucky. They will not be charged a timeout. So, uh, maybe both teams get a win here. Coach Helton doesn't lose a challenge, and South Florida gets their first down. If anything, you get a breather for both sides of the football. I know West Kentucky would love to get a little breather, recollect their thoughts a little bit, and come out and be more stout in the middle of the field where they are. It's a great chance to get a three and out and try to flip field position once again. Tyson Summers, defensive coordinator for this Western Kentucky team, was hoping for what they call knockouts defensively. What a knockout is, Malik, he said to us, is if you get a three and out, a takeaway, a field goal, or a fourth down, uh, you know, stop, those are knockouts. He says you need nine of them to win the football game. He said in this game, we're probably going to need ten. Yeah, and, and so far, they haven't been able to find an answer on fourth and short, so they haven't been able to knock them out on that. But they, they've been doing a pretty good job of overall not allowing them to just totally take over the game. But these crucial situations in the fourth down, being able to create turnovers, getting them off the field, is something that they have to put the, put the pressure on if they want a chance to separate themselves in this game. Byron Brown picks up some yardage here. Back to pass here on second down. Left side of the field, some contact maybe. Anthony Johnson Jr. in on the coverage there. He's trying to go step for step with Jaden Alexis. You can live with a throw like that because it comes on a second down and five where you complete it or don't complete it. You have third and manageable, third and five. You have the whole offense still available to you. So that's a good shot taken, especially when it's one on one. South Florida, four of 13 on third downs in the game. Nice check with me on the sideline, get to the right formation. Got a light box. Brown, back he goes. Feels the pressure, able to just get it off. He just kind of shoves it to Naquan right and trying to get some kind of yardage. He does get positive yardage to the 35 yard line, but he's short of the four, first down marker. Davion Williams saves the first down for Western Kentucky's defense, but they're quickly to the line of scrimmage. Brown under center this time, goes with the pitch, and they've got it sniffed out. Big time play. Terrion Thompson able to make the tackle here. But, you, but Key Upton Stout being able to shrink the line and not allow them to get outside. That's where they've been killing them every time on fourth down is getting outside. Stout made a great job of pushing everything inside, and then you got Terrion Thompson finishing the play, and that's how you get this team off the field. That's a knockout right there. That's what we call a knockout. I'm sure Tyson Summers happy to add that to the board. Penalty markers come out. After the fourth down stop, Great play recognition by Upton Stout, just knowing what's coming. Tired of seeing them convert on the same type of play and being able to make a difference. Something that Tyson Summers said, Upton Stout is one of the best players, not only on the team, After but in the, the play, country. unsportsmanlike conduct, offense, number five, 15-yard penalty after the turnover on downs. That's the player's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. First down, Western Kentucky. That's Naquan Wright. A transfer from Florida. It's a frustration foul right there. Don't want to give any more momentum to a Western Kentucky offense behind a quarterback that can make you pay for it. So, so we get the extra yardage here for Western Kentucky, and that's not something you ever want to do is give Western Kentucky extra yardage especially on their side of the football. Now, this is going to be crucial downs for USF to try to balance it out. Don't let Austin Reed get going. The third, the third quarter has certainly been his. Look at that. Here on the end around on that pitch, looking for some room there to run and not getting much. Right here, it's KD Hutchinson, who's been heavily involved in this game. Hutchinson, 5'8", 180-pound redshirt freshman out of Hamilton, 
Georgia. Yeah, and just looking for some of these youngsters to see who can develop into playmakers on this Western Kentucky team. At this point, you got to try a little bit of everybody. You know, we had a guy catch a touchdown barrier who wasn't even on our sheet up here. So it just shows you that they're going to go as far as they need to on that depth chart to plug and play guys to be ready for Austin Reed to make plays with. One of those guys with only two lines in the media guy because no one knows any <laughs> anything about him. As we get a reception here, they're going to know who he is now after a 51-yard reception. Oh, yeah. Eastern, <laughs> Eastern Messer with the reception here. And we're going to get a third down and about 11 after a one-yard loss there. 2.19 to go here, third quarter. Reed looking, firing, dangerous throw over the middle. Blue Smith has it, but it's going to be well short of the first down. Picks up about three yards. It'll be a fourth down and eight as Amaris Brown makes the stop there for South Florida. Great job by the USF defense and Todd Orlando of switching to man concept on third down and not allowing them to set up that long over the line of scrimmage screen we like to call it trying to get everybody to clear out downfield you get a nice drag underneath they they sniffed it out and they was able to rally to the football one of the things that Todd Orlando when he first came in said we wanted the guys to play better together and tackle and run at the same time so here's the putt John Atkins is going to call for the fair catch. Inside the 10 is where Western Kentucky, our partner, where South Florida's next drive will begin. And Western Kentucky coming off what they called knockouts in the defense from Tyson Summers. They made some big plays here, started with that interception. Yeah, making sure the guy's uncomfortable. The D-line has been a great job. Look, they're saying, listen, we know you're going to try to widen us out, but we're going to deliver pressure up the middle and make it a hard day for your quarterback to operate. And then they made a great adjustment after getting beat three times in a row on fourth and short. Tyson Summers said, hey, let's have a guy make a play, and he called on Stout and made that conversion. Now they're not being able to convert on fourth down, and that's what you call in-game adjustments. And now how does USF respond to that? Here's a run up the middle on first down. Desmond Baker there to swallow up the hole here a little bit. On the carry is Kiwan Powell. Two-yard pickup, but it'll be second and eight. Powell, extra yardage there. Need to be tripped up from behind, able to get his... Seven or eight yards there. Rayshon Hodge with the stop. It's going to be a quarterback keeper here this time as Brown's going to get the first down and more. Escapes one tackle, gets across the 40, and gets near midfield before he's run out of bounds by Upton Stout. He's sneaky fast with his strides. I still can't tell if he's fast or he's elusive or is he quick, but he's able to get the first down. Good read, outflanking the defense, finding a way to run. He's not taking shots. He's either getting out of bounds or getting to the ground. 32 yards on the run there for Byron Brown. And the Bulls are moving. Truly a dual threat being able to amass the amount of yards he has running the football and throwing the football. Hopefully he can add an explosive play here down the field. 132 yards rushing in the game for Brown. As Kwan Powell gets forced back from the line of scrimmage. Dallas Walker is there. The Texas A&M transfer. But for both defenses, it's a bend but don't break mentality. What's the... Western Kentucky is looking to not allow everything to be over the, over the top, but they need something to keep them in front and make them work for it. 31-24, Western Kentucky on top. South Florida starting to move the football again. Yeah, let's see if Austin Reed can continue this train rolling so we can close out the game the right way. But USF is not going to go away easy. Let's take a look at the PNC Bank game summary here. We told you we'd see a lot of yards, a lot of offense, a lot of points. 438 for the Bulls, 396 for the Hilltoppers here. 
And Malik, it's been, again, a situation where kind of the pendulum has swung a little back and forth here. Right now, I think S South Florida trying to find the equalizer here has been a little bit better here the last couple of drops. The key stat is the third down conversions. Western Kentucky has to do a better job, but they're, they're able to still find explosive plays and score points. But that third and 11 might come into play in the fourth quarter. So we start this fourth quarter, seventh play of the current drive here for South Florida. Penalty markers come out. Looks like we might get a holding call of Byron Brown found a seam and worked his way to the sidelines for about a nine yard pickup there. But where the flags are looks like in the vicinity of a hold. We'll see what it is officially. Desmond Baker seems to know what it is. He's pointing the other direction. We've seen a personal foul on, in these, these situations near the line as well. We have a foul by each team on the play. Offside, defense, also holding on the offense. Those penalties offset, replay second down. So offsetting penalties, it's like it didn't happen. So we, we'll bring up a second down and nine again. Just, you know, no, no big deal. Just cancel each other out. Still got a lock in, though. Big down right here. Big down, just saw Tyson Summers in that baby blue over on the sideline. I'm still waiting for USF to take that shot down the field, open it up again with a, maybe a one-on-one -on -one go route to Choffrey Brown. Brown looking long, fires left side, a little underthrown, incomplete. Naeem Simmons, the intended target, up and stout in on the coverage there for Western Kentucky. When we said we were looking for a shot, they took one. They got the opportunity to get the one-on-one. -on -one. He got a great inside release. I think he just missed time to jump a little bit, a little too early of a jump. But the quarterback got to be able to finish his throw, bring down the football so he can complete that one-on-one -on -one post route. That might have been one where if he didn't slow down, he might have been in a good stride to, to just... Yeah, yeah, just make a play. Yeah. Just mistimed it a little bit. Now watch the middle pressure, getting the quarterback off his spot. Can they find the one-on-one -on -one they like? So Brown on third down, fires right side. He's got a man. It's complete to Sean Atkins near the marker. It's close at the 30, pardon me, the 41-yard line. And it'll be fourth down. They're not allowing him to line up. They're three for four on fourth down. They stopped them earlier, and they go with the Tom Brady-style quarterback sneak. That's how you do it, under, under center. center. Exactly, <laughs> Byron Brown. A thousand ways of skinning cap, but my favorite way is quarterback sneak from under center, not from the gun, and it works almost every time. South Florida starting from inside their own 10. It was their worst field position of the day, and they're moving the chains again, and look at the running back, Kwan Powell, taking some punishment as he gets through the line and picks up about six yards, maybe about five and a half, as Nico Cooper makes the stop for Western. And second and four after the six-yard pickup. Brown looking right side. He's got Atkins. He's going to overthrow him a little bit. And it's incomplete. But they're taking a shot. Oh, yeah. They said, listen, we know we're getting a one-on-one -on -one with middle pressure on the outside. we got to make something happen. And he overshot it a little bit, but this is what you want to see. So Rome Weber is on the turf for Western Kentucky in the end zone. And it looks like he's back up. Seems like he was a little shaken up. I mean, they've been running the full length of the field all game, both of these teams. So thank goodness he's nothing too serious. And man, this is where the experience of Byron Brown has to grow and to know the situation of the game when you get that one-on-one -on -one that you like to finally get the matchup you want you got to find a way to complete it you can't just drop back and heave hoe it hoping it goes in you got to know what's going in and that's really the difference in the experience between a byron brown and a austin reed austin reed's making that happen if you give him that chance nine times out of ten he's making that happen but for byron brown getting the experience he's going to learn how to adjust and make those throws when it matters the most Third down and four here. They're five of 16 on third down on the day. And finding some room is Kwan Powell. 
and gets inside the 15-yard line. Another first down, another third down conversion for South Florida. Upton Stout maybe making the tackle, a 20-yard pickup there for Powell. Oh, man, great running the job. Great job running the football right here. Penalty markers come out after that first down run. Once again by Powell. Powell on the day. Nine rushes for 35 yards. Offside, defense, number three, in the neutral zone of the snap. Five-yard penalty remains first down. So it's going against the Hilltoppers here. And today's red zone is brought to you by Verizon. South Florida in the red zone today. A couple of trips, a touchdown, and a field goal. So another trip for them here. Prime position to pull out your best red zone shots right here, especially for a young quarterback. Go deep, dig deep down in that playbook and find one of those gadget plays West Kentucky tried to use in the red zone and found a lot of success with. This is not a place to be conventional deep in the red zone right here. So this will be the 11th play of the drive. Brown fires over the middle, pass broken up. There was a chance at a touchdown there, was in and out of the hands, but we do have a penalty marker down in the offensive backfield as Brown took a hit. This might be rough in the passer. Yeah, it seems like he took a shot, but got up right foul. After. Roughing the passer. Defense. The penalty mid force from the previous spot. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. And that's what happens when you don't get a lot of depth in the pocket. You allow yourself to limit the space between where the defense is coming to hit you and when you have from the defense. And right there, it was an illegal hit, but shows when you don't get a lot of depth, that can happen to you. But it showed, it showed to be positive for a USF team, but Byron Brown doesn't need to be taking too many more shots like that. Kind of erases a good defensive play. Anthony Brackenridge was called for the penalty, and it's picked off. It's intercepted. Aaron Key's got it. Down the sideline he goes. And that's a knockout for Tyson Summers' defense. The Hilltoppers needed a big play. South Florida was on an 11 play drive at that point. The 11th play though, a turnover and a knockout for the Western Kentucky defense. Oh man, the youth showing, didn't have it in the first window, held on to it, panicked a little bit, but that's what you cannot do in the red zone right there because those are crucial turnover plays. I think he was still feeling that hit from the play before from the illegal hit. Oh man, and he got, got up slow after that one. So just not a great combination. Uh, that Byron Brown went through in those last two plays. He's still a little banged up, but that's the, the benefit of having a physical defense where it's going to make a young quarterback make mistakes that close to the end zone. So as South Florida was looking for the equalizer there after a roughing the passer penalty, they got him a first and goal. Now it's right back into the hands of Austin Reed and Western Kentucky pass to the right side is is incomplete dalvin smith with our uh, ink is complete i should say the reception made by dalvin smith but he loses yardage on the play so it'll be second and 12. braxton clark with the good defensive play there yeah good job by braxton clark being able to play through the defender and make a play on the football don't allow west kentucky to start fast get them behind the chains early so now they have to change up the way they're calling offense so second and 12 here we're under 12 minutes to go here in the fourth Reed looking to check down. Ball comes loose, but it was after Step had already hit the turf. South Florida acting like they just got a touchdown on a fumble. Daquan Evans was the one that ran it in. But they called the play dead. Austin Reed going through his check down, firing his check down. And that's just a great defensive play. I mean, way to, way to hit through the... the, uh, the the receiver right here. Make a play on the football. Being able to make the play and get the fumble. The previous play is under review. So we'll get a review of the play here. And we'll get another look at it. I believe he made a football move after he called it, but it was such a bang-bang play. It could go either way. Austin Reed 
But once it was once it was his elbow here, Malik. That, I mean, that's that's got to be down. So yeah, that's oh, but mm. well, the you you can say the ground caused the fumble True. because his elbow was down. So I think if you look at it in slow mo, you might just call it a down ball, and you know just have him what third down and long, but. Great job by the defender to be able just to make a physical play. Another physical tackle coming right after the physical tackle by the uh, the corner from the previous play, which just shows that these guys are playing through all the way through the fourth quarter. They're not letting up on the physicality on both sides of the football defensively. And now you have to have tough calls made by the refs because everything's been bang, bang. And it just shows you the competitiveness that's out there today on that field. This might be one of those with not enough evidence even if even if you say well perhaps it was coming loose after he made the football move yeah if I'm the ref I'm gonna say the ground caused the fumble on that his elbow was down but couldn't you make the argument that if if the ball was jostling around while he was making the football and move it could be an incomplete pass you can but I think he he because he's in the air here, so you can't really say that he came down. The ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner was down by contact. Third down. Well, we can debate it all we want. All, all that matters is what the guys in the striped shirt say. <laughs> they get paid the big bucks to make those calls, but I think we had a little inkling right there. We, we, we're not too far off. Yeah. Third and uh, three of 11 on third down in the game for Western Kentucky. The other part about that is they, they lose some serious yardage on that play. So it's a third and 17 that Austin Reed's got to work with. And after that big play on the interception, you, you kind of was ho you're hoping that your offense could make some plays, but it hasn't happened yet. Reed right, right there into Smith underneath. Penalty marker comes out as he gets towards the sideline back to the original line of scrimmage. Logan Berryhill, the one that forces him out. Penalties starting to tick up for both of these teams here. Pass interference. Offense, number eight. That ball. Now, now they're going to stop and, and have a conversation after the official just called a pass interference on the offense. I think what West Kentucky is arguing is that they threw the ball behind the line of scrimmage, so you're allowed to block down the field. It's a it's a nice screen. The previous play set up. is under review. It's a nice screen that they set up where you you have the receiver from the opposite side cross the field, but get behind the line of scrimmage to catch the football, so you're allowed to block down the field. Something that I'm sure they'll review on the on the instant replay, but. The type of play that they called, I'm sure it will be waved off because he was able to get behind the line of scrimmage before he caught the football, which can allow the receivers to block down field early. Alex Golish having a pretty heated conversation over on the sidelines here. Yeah, I think I think they'll be able to get this, but then again. The, the fact that they were able to make the, the contact of blocks down the field early probably just got the refs a little bit alarmed there, but nothing that an instant replay can't solve, and with these great refs we have, can't figure it out. But I do believe that they should be waved off because of where they complete the football behind the line of scrimmage, so you're allowed to be able to block like that downfield, but we'll see how it turns out. Well, we had the opposite situation of that same play earlier in the game. Now that one, that one was right. The ball was thrown above, above the line of scrimmage, so you can't go downfield and make the block. So hopefully they're able to show us that variation of calls in these in these two calls right here. After review, there is no foul for pass interference on the play. The ball was caught behind the line of scrimmage. Look at that. Fourth down. So the pass play to Dalvin Smith is a good one. Picks up eight yards. And it'll be a fourth down. And nine, so they will punt the football away here. Sean Atkins back deep to receive the punt here for South Florida with 10.50 and counting remaining. The only thing we're missing is an explosive special teams play from either side right now to change the game. Average punt in the game has been a little over 45 yards. 
This one a little bit short and expected. Good hit there on special teams. Coming in to make the play here is uh, Davion Williams. And <laughs> South Florida going to have some good field position here as we get ready for their next drive. The Gunners on both teams, special teams, been making fantastic plays where they're not allowing the guy to make plays after. So, man, explosive plays all around and great tackle. Two to play here in Bowling Green, Western Kentucky on top of South Florida, 31 to 24. Alex Sabario, Malik Zaire, and our entire CBS crew, glad to have you aboard for week one college football action. It's been an entertaining one. A new look South Florida team under new head coach Alex Golish. Really on both sides of the ball. They're bringing that offense from Tennessee, and then you got Todd Orlando. Only way to go was up on the worst defense in college football last year for South Florida. They've been playing pretty well. But right now oh, on man. offense, South Florida after that punt. Byron Brown going back to work here. He's kind of shaken up at the end of the last drive. And we're going to hand off here on second down. An opportunity for a knockout here again for Western Kentucky. That's what defensive coordinator Tyson Summers calls a three and out. Anthony Brackenridge on the tackle that last time. So now we've got a third down and six. Quickly get into the line of scrimmage, and now they'll look over. And we're going to get a timeout here taken by Western Kentucky. Great, great timeout by Tyson Summers because they had a mismatch of three receivers up the top versus the two defenders, so they had to get a timeout to make sure they get it right. But Western Kentucky coming out to make them stop and try to get the ball back in Austin Reed's hands. Back in Bowling Green, Western Kentucky looking for a knockout on defense. That's what Tyson Summers calls the three and out. Byron Brown, you see the numbers on him. We'll see what Western Kentucky does defensively, and we'll see what the decision is on offense here for South Florida. Firing left side, dangerous throw that sails over the head of Kelly Joyner Jr. And that'll bring up fourth down and another knockout for Tyson Summers' defense. I mean, what an enjoyable conversation we had with him yesterday is, you know, we have our production meetings and talk with the coaches, and then we told him, hey, you know, if this coaching thing doesn't work out, maybe you join us up in the booth, because he was going storyline for storyline with each of his players up on the board. And we're just jotting it all down, trying to figure out what we're going to say on the broadcast about his defense. Oh, he's a tuned in guy for sure, man. Loves, his, loves the guys that he's coaching and he knows about them. And you can't leave without knowing who you leave. Blue Smith. I beg your pardon. On the return there, KD Hutchinson gets hit after making the catch. 31-24, Western Kentucky on top of South Florida. You're watching College Football presented by the Home Depot. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Belfour, the leading disaster recovery partner for businesses and communities, by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, and by The Home Depot, how doers get more done. You know, a lot of schools try to claim to be quarterback U. Western Kentucky doesn't claim to be QBU, but they may be the unofficial QBU with what they've done through the years here, especially recently, you saw Bailey Zappi as Austin Reed leads this offense back out on the field. We'll take a look at their last two seasons here. These are the last two seasons at quarterback for Western Kentucky. 5,967 passing yards for Bailey Zappi. Of course, we all know the records that he broke here. Now with the New England Patriots on their practice squad. And then you've got here Austin Reed led the country in passing. Trying to do it again here in 2023. And the pass in the turf and a kind of a shot delivered here by Rashad Cheney Jr. Grounds the ball. That's a smart play by Austin Reed. If the screen's not there, throw it at his feet. But, you know, being physical like Rashad Cheney is, he's not, a, he's not okay with just allowing that to go on. He's going to make contact, and it's a fair play. He thought he had the ball. Cheney, That's what I was saying. Cheney played. 
Six games last year at 16 tackles for the South Florida team. Todd Orlando called Cheney a big influence on the whole team. On, on one of the guys that was returning from last year that was trying to kind of set the tone for what this new defense that was the worst in college football on what they would be this year. And you could already see his influence there. As Austin Reed breaks free, he's trying to pull a Byron Brown and get loose and free and picks up a first down on the run. Austin Reed does a great job of being patient, finding a way to get that first down with his feet. He can, he can move too, just like Byron Brown. Under nine minutes to play here in the fourth. Western Kentucky up by seven. And they get a first down here as they try to move those chains. See a little fatigue setting in with both sides. Hands on the hips. It's getting a little hotter as the day is going on. This is where the experience of an Austin Reed comes in so handily because he's been in this situation multiple times. And when you have a veteran, you lean on those veterans to close out games, especially the ones that are tight like this one. Is Daquan Evans, who's on the turf right now for South Florida, getting looked at here by the athletic training staff. Has a couple of key injuries in this game, but specifically that of Malachi Corley. Again, leading receiver on this Western Kentucky team. Again, nearly 1,300 yards receiving last year. I ended up leaving the field on a cart. Right now, if I'm Western Kentucky, I'm looking and finding a way to draw up an explosive play to put the nail in the coffin on this drive. Austin Reed did a great job picking up the first down with his wheels. But now let's see if we can take advantage of this opportunity during this injury timeout to scheme up some stuff that we saw from the previous plays that we could take advantage of and push the ball down the field. They need to get another score before getting off of this this possession right here. Well, the last two touchdowns for Western Kentucky have been on shots toward the end zone. Dalvin Smith is... 42 yards to Austin Reed. Now, for those of you tuning in for the Washington State-Colorado State game, you'll be able to find it streaming free on the CBS Sports app or at cbssports.com slash cbssn as soon as it kicks off. And, of course, we'll get you out there immediately after the conclusion of this game. By the way, that third down conversion there from Western Kentucky, their first third down conversion of the second half. Again, big plays have been the story when it comes to Western Kentucky in this second half on the touchdown. Again, the 42-yard reception from Dalvin Smith and then Musa Berry with 51-yard touchdown. And on the check down, looking towards the middle of the field, and it's Davion Irvin Poindexter with the reception there on the dump off. Jalen Schuler with the stop. They try to hit him with a pump and go coming out of the timeout. Fake the screen, try to leak somebody down the field. USF played disciplined football, didn't bite. Made the quarterback take the check down, win for the defense. But great job by Austin Reed not going broke by taking a profit. So second down and seven here for the Hilltoppers. And you can tell they're taking a little bit more time with the lead. Pass left side, Smith. And gets across the 30, getting out of bounds. Penalty marker is out near the end of the play. Jaden Curry with the stop. now under eight minutes to go and and really the, this game is as kind of for a game that has played fast offensively it's slowed down because there is of, no foul on the play because of penalties and injuries yeah i think this is a sign of what the first week of college football looks like you're working out a lot of wrinkles you're trying to figure out the chemistry of what rotations work what plays they really like this season because everything else has been coming out of the spring practice, a right. ball practice, preparation against the scout team. So now this is a game where you're trying to see, okay, where do we have a foundation at and build off from there? And we found out a lot about both teams tonight. Reed escapes the pocket. Again, decides to, to run with it, then decides to throw. He's got a man. It's complete to Blue Smith out of bounds. Big time play over near midfield. Let's see where they give it to him officially. Looks like it's going to be right at the 50-yard line. 19-yard pickup there before Braxton Clark forces him out. Another first down 
here for the Hilltoppers. Austin Reed does a great job, and because he's been using his wheels to be effective, draws the defense up, he keeps his eyes downfield and continues to make plays for his guys that are wide open on an extended plays. You know, one of the things that Coach Helton talked about when evaluating and looking for quarterbacks, he said he wants to see three factors. One of those things is creativity, and that's something that Austin Reed showed off there as we get another handoff on first down to Poindexter and picks up a good seven yards on first down. You're right. The three things, changing arm angles, anticipation, and also being able to be creative. And Austin Reed has all three traits that make him effective. And then once you put him in a great system like this at Western Kentucky, you get to see the ceiling and the potential of what all three of those traits can look like on display. Creativity, anticipation, and the ability to change arm angles, all very interesting traits. Ball start, offense, number five, five-yard penalty, remains second down. And honestly, that wasn't the answer I expected when, when I asked him the question about what you kind of were looking for. You know, I'm thinking in my head, oh, he's looking at he's looking at uh, accuracy and, and, and completion percentage and how many, uh, how far he can throw the football down. None of those things that he talked about. That's right. And the creativity stood out the most to me because that's what this generation or this age of football requires from the quarterback position. You can't just be a, a totem pole and standing still. you got to be able to find ways to make plays when the play breaks down because you can't do everything perfect from a scripting standpoint. you got to have dudes back there at the trigger man to make plays happen beyond that. Poindexter with another run there on second down. So now it'll be third down and about seven to go here. Amaris Brown in. Defensive coordinator Todd Orlando there. Got a big third down coming up here for his defense as we approach the five minute mark. Right now they've been relying on Austin Reed to make a play after the play design. So let's, you know, I won't be surprised to see him using his feet to buy more time to look down the field to make something happen. Four receivers here. Reed fires, pass complete over the middle. Another first down and more here for KD Hutchinson. Gets inside the 30 yard line. And another first down for the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. This time USF says we're going to keep him in the pocket, see if he can make a downfield throw. It was a great route concept, a nice drive concept to get a pick so you can get Hutchinson underneath for the drag and replace the, the blitzing middle linebackers. Austin Reeves saw the coverage, found the great, uh, the great open guy and continued to move the chains. This is the veteran leadership and experience from a guy that has seen just about every defensive look. 19-yard pickup here. Now the Washington State-Colorado State game is underway and now available streaming free on the CBS Sports app or at cbssports.com slash cbssn. We'll get you out there as soon as this one is over from Bowling Green, Kentucky. A run on first down, a two-yard pickup here for the Hilltoppers. Here in a seven-point game with Western Kentucky on top. Right now, USF has a lot to be proud of, win or loss in this game, because of the way that they've responded by answering a lot of questions that they didn't have answers for before going into the season. And I think right now this is a great foundation for them to build off of. It just so happens they're playing one of the best quarterbacks in the nation for the first game. Another run here on second down as they try to take more time away. That was the 11th play of this drive here for Western Kentucky. This drive nearly six minutes in length already and it continues to tick upwards as Western Kentucky is just trying to take as much time off of the clock as possible and perhaps get a score for the nail in the coffin to make it a two score game but they're gonna have to convert here on third down it's third down and six they're gonna heat him up place a man behind it the crowd is quieted down for Reed as he fires left side and throws it behind Dalvin Smith and incomplete might have got crossed up there as Logan Berryhill was with him stride for stride as the pass falls incomplete. And now the kicking unit will come on as Lucas Carnero will come on to try to attempt a field goal here from about 43 yards away. Yeah, we talked about it in the coaches' meeting that Coach Hell's not afraid to wheel out his kicker at this, about this range. It'll be a 42-yard attempt officially. And the kick is up. He's got some pretty good leg on it. And that one is good. So 319 to play here in regulation. Western Kentucky has extended the lead to 10. 
as they try to go to 1 0. Let's take a look at the player of the game brought to you by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. And it's the quarterback from Western Kentucky, Austin Reed, making plays, especially in the second half, to get his team not only in front, but in front in a big way. USF has done a great job of uh, having Austin Reed have to show all of his ability running the football, throwing the football, taking shots on big plays, taking chances down the field when it doesn't seem like they have a play. I mean, he's been everything for this Western Kentucky offense and it's proven that you can put the ball in his hands and trust him. 50 attempts and just to be up seven or just to be up 10, it just shows you how much faith they have in Austin Reed when all is seems not bleak it seems not good Austin Reed can pull you through 336 yards two touchdowns got a rushing score as well as Reed coming back for final season here to make plays and he's had to do it this team was down 17 to 7 at one point in this game and he's led them back in what's been a back and forth but once Western Kentucky's gotten control in the second half they lead by 10 looking to stay there as they try to move to 1-0 here at home now yeah, Austin Reed, let him cook. They said, let Russ cook, let him cook. Coming up next, more college football as Cam Ward of Washington State take on Colorado State. And at 10.30 Eastern, it's Idaho State and San Diego State. Watch all the action unfold here on CBS Sports Network. And if you want to watch that Washington State-Colorado State game, it is already underway and available streaming free on the CBS Sports app or at cbssports.com slash cbssn. We will get you out there to Fort Collins as soon as this one is over. Here on first down, South Florida down by 10. And that's a running play that ended up being a lot longer than expected here as running one way there was Naquan Wright, then decided to take it back to the right side and picks up a first down as Aaron Key finally makes the stop. Already on first down, here comes the rush, and it's a strip by Jaquez Evans. He's breaking free to the end zone and putting this one on ice on a hot day. What a veteran play right there. He said, listen, I'll take the game over. Give me the ball, quarterback from Byron Brown. And well, that's a veteran play, and that's, that's special right there. Comes off the edge. He could have easily got the sack, but said, no, I'll take the ball instead and get off of me. Let me run this thing into the end zone and put the nail in the coffin. He's been working hard all day, and that's how you end a football game right there. Isn't that the way Bobby Boucher won the Bourbon Bowl? <laughs> Absolutely. He said, I don't want to do another chance of letting you guys throw it down the field. I'm going to just take it from you it, and run it in myself. He's like, give me that. Give me that. Ah. Grown man play right there. 40 to 24. Western adds another point on the point after and might have just sealed the deal on a 1-0 start to their 2023 season. Jaquez Evan Donut finishes it off. A 27 yard, can you even call that a fumble for Jaquez Evans taking it to the house for the touchdown on the takeaway? They call him Donut. <laughs> Coach Tyson Summers called him one of the smartest players he's ever coached. And he comes up with a big play there and makes it a 41 24 game with under three minutes to go here in regulations. Let's send it back to our New York studios and Brent Stover. Guys, the Washington State Colorado State game is underway and now available streaming free on the CBS Sports app or at cbssports.com slash cbssn. 3 nothing Colorado State early will get you out there as soon as you guys are done. All right. We're back here in Bowling Green. Alex Tobario, Malik Zaire, our entire CBS crew. As Western Kentucky rallied back from 10 points down. And now they lead at 41-24, trying to hand an inspired South Florida team who's looking for what would have been a true upset under new head coach Alex Golis trying to change the culture. You can already see the signs of that culture change with this South Florida team. But they certainly were going to take their lumps early as they are moving the football quickly, trying to get back into this one as Brown escapes the pocket. And he's going to take it and all the way to the sideline near midfield. Picks up a first down for the Bulls as they continue to fight here at the end of this one. 
And we've got another South Florida player down on the turf. One thing you could definitely mention, though, is the fact that USF has so much to look forward to. They just happen to run into a juggernaut in a team in Western Kentucky that found their stride as the game got on and on and on. They continued to rely on their quarterback, and then the defense came alive. Uh, Jacquez Evans said, I'm trying to take the game over. Donut said, this game is OV, taking candy from a baby and the baby being the, the, <laughs> the young quarterback in Byron Brown, and he just showed his experience right there. That's how you end the game, by putting the nail in the coffin. First team All-Conference USA last year, and Jaquez Evans, 106 tackles last year, eight and a half sacks. And you see Evans here stretching. Probably hadn't ran that much in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Four, 14 tackles for the loss, nine sacks, two fumble recoveries, and pick it up right where he left off. Yeah, he said, man, that's a little more running for that touchdown, and I see what receivers feel running in open field. But, man, I mean, if I was him, I'd finish this day take my helmet off, did a great job today helping his team, his football team win as the leader of that unit. So we're a little bit stalled here as we had injury here to Zane Herring and now he's coming off here for South Florida. But a half yard shy of the marker here for the Bulls. So it'll be second down and inches. And the handoff goes over to the right. And they'll keep the clock moving here as they pick up a first down on the run from Naquan Wright. Now it's about not giving up the late touchdown if I'm Western Kentucky defense. Keep everything in front of you and, and end up riding this game out. Pass left side, ends up going through the hands of Naeem Simmons. Another transfer on this South Florida team. 5'10", 182 pound junior. Played at Wagner the last two seasons. Just the overall response from this Western Kentucky team on both sides of the football shows the dexterity that they're willing to go the length of the game to fight out to the very end. And they kept making plays, and USF stalled in, in, in spots as a young team expected, especially from the quarterback position. But Western Kentucky showed why they end up scoring a lot of points in that bowl game and looking to do the same. Sean Atkins with that reception there. We got a third down and one, and Byron Brown looking to break free, spins and in traffic, picks up a first down here. Gets to the 33 yard line with a minute 24 to go. It's great to see a young quarterback that had a couple mistakes late, still looking to fight to finish the game the right way, and that's putting the ball in the end zone. Pass on the right side, complete to Chaffrey Brown, who had that big time touchdown reception early. It's Anthony Johnson able to make the stop here. As we're now 1-11 to play. They still have two timeouts, South Florida, if they want to use them here. Western Kentucky has to feel great about the response from their quarterback being able to make it happen without their main targets. The question moving forward is how are they going to continue that process by putting the ball in all three's hands when you may not have the same amount of talent that you had before. Pass right side and that's going to be incomplete. Looking for Chaffrey Brown and Talik Evans forcing the play out of bounds for the incompletion. And that's going to bring a third down and seven here with a minute six to play. Alex Golish, a lot of work in front of him, but he's getting the support from the folks in Tampa. As they're making a lot of changes, including a stadium coming that way. A lot of money being spent to get this South Florida program up to speed with the rest of FBS football. The penalty marker is down in the offensive backfield here on third and seven, now under a minute to go. 
And you can tell there's a lot of optimism for the future over in South Florida from a lot of folks that are there. Absolutely. They want to be Champa Bay. They want to be with the Buccaneers and what they brought to the Tampa Bay area, the same at USF. And what we've seen so far is that this is a team with a lot of fight, maybe ran out of gas late, but they're also going against the juggernaut that's looking Holding. to reload. Offense, number 70, 10-yard penalty, replay third down. It's a holding call against South Florida, so that's coming back 10 yards. It's going to be about third and a mile here for the Bulls as we're under a minute to go to try to wrap this one up here in Bowling Green. And certainly there's going to be a lot of questions through the weekend and into next week on the status of Malachi Corley, who left this game early, their leading receiver last year. And a lot of folks looking at to see what his future will be beyond 